Australian football video in conjunction with the Collingwood Football Club proudly release a tribute to Darren Mullane featuring exclusive interviews with coach Lee Matthews, family, friends and Collingwood teammates. This outstanding video portrays Mullane's magnificent career throughout his 147 games with the most famous of football teams and is essential viewing for all football fans. A tribute to Darren Mullane, now available from these outlets. I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 season. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any butcher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. From Australian football video comes the most exciting footy decade ever, the electrifying 80s. See the marks and the sparks, the tragic and the magic, the misses and the kisses, the preacher and the creature, the flyers and the messiahs, the sneaks and the cheeks, the cunning stunts and the stunning punts. See the thrills, the spills, the skills and the deals. The electrifying 80s, the perfect gift for that special footy sickness. Probably as a general resume, we uh, finished, of course, the end of October at the end of 91, so sorry, at the end of August, what am I saying? So we were able to have the September, uh, October break and plan. We effectively uh, upgraded our whole weights uh, situation in terms of making that a greater emphasis in our pre-season, both for, uh, for the player who needed more sort of bulk and weight on their frame and for the, uh, the general player who didn't need that, but just we wanted to increase their, uh, their strength and power sort of component physically. And pre-Christmas is when you tend to work on those factors, which we did. So we think we got the group to Christmas, uh, you know, pretty much where we wanted them to be as a group. Um, then we went into the January uh, training, which is uh, very short and compact because we had a Foster's Cup match up in Darwin almost the first week of February, which I don't know any of us really look forward uh, to, to that. It certainly makes that month after Christmas um, a very short month to get ready to, to actually play. Um, but the, the pre-season went quite well. I mean, we lost up in Darwin, but given the conditions and the side that we had in, we, it wasn't that, that bad a defeat, we didn't think, in terms of you know, uh, losing optimism for later on. Um, and, and really, it was just a fairly standard uh, pre-season through uh, February and March. Um, Gary Pert had come over from Fitzroy and he didn't play the practice games until March. Uh, Tony Woods, another recruit who didn't play at all in 1991 with, with Fitzroy. And Shane Watson, uh, one of our uh, young fellows who'd come up through the reserves in under 19s, they were the three players that hadn't been at Collingwood before uh, that had sort of worked their way into senior contention as we got to the first match. It ended up being our, our highest score for the year, the 23-16, and we won by 66 points. And very uh, quickly, I think that was our, our greatest winning margin for the year. Really, it was one of the, the very few games through the year from this point onwards where we won by a big margin. We won by 10 goals plus. Um, at that stage, even though we weren't, didn't think it was a terrific game, we played well, won by our 10 goals. Um, so all in all, we were quite pleased. Your odds on to get a free kick out there. Well, there's Scotty Russell to the centre wing area. Oh, good mark, Dacos. Peter Dacos showed his class there. 
Now the kick in towards half forward. The lead is on Watson versus McKenzie. Watson will be too nippy for McKenzie. Now he hooks it around. That was good play and a good diving mark by Craig Kelly. Craig Kelly from 40 metres, a floater. I think it has snuck in for a goal. It has. Gained about 40 metres with that one. Chance for Collingwood this time. The hand pass into Russell came from Stasovic and a good pass out wide to Manson. He kicks it back into the breeze to centre the ball. Kelly. Craig Kelly. He's kicked the Pies' only goal to date. Chance for two out of two. Yes. Now, oh, that's oh. a bad hand pass to a man who was covered. The cap of bad play, David Murphy. Richardson to half four. This might cost the Swans a goal. Manson to Scott Russell. Scott Russell from 40 metres blazes a goal and slams it through. The hand pass comes over the top from Kelly to Lewis, but dropped a bit short of him. Lehman keeps it at the toe. Well played by Troy Lehman. Sensational footy. Off the left boot towards the 50 metre line. Watson. McKenzie did well to keep the ball in front of him. Morwood for Collingwood. Gets it through to Watson from the 50. Centres for Dacos. You're in trouble, Higgins. And an easy shot at goal. Kicked only one last week, but he's kicked one today. It's good coaching by Bacchanal with Brunton. He's the one dangerous. Dacos, a freak! A magnificent goal by Peter Dacos. Darcevich palms down. Tony Shaw gets his first kick, which is interesting. Dacos holds up his opponent, Higgins, and marks with the other one. Brunton's doing a good job on him. Now here's Starsevich at half back. Ooh, nearly had his head taken off by Murphy. Starsevich to the half forward line. Morwood versus Kaplow. Almost a good mark to Morwood. Now a chance for the Magpies. Paul Williams can go over the top. Scotty Russell. An open goal coming up. Russell fires in a goal. Bam, and slams it through for a great goal. That's good running by McKenzie. Hand pass not great to Holmes. And of all people to give it to, Dacos. Beautiful. Good running, Williams. Bang to the forward line. Kelly. It comes to Watson. He snaps a goal. McGovern in towards full forward. Over the back is right. On to Williams. Williams the runner. He's got Stasevich. And he's got Graham Wright. Wright comes through centre. This is brilliant football. In the Watson. And a good mark by the young forward. 40 metres from goal. Excellent play from Collingwood. Moving the ball through the centre. And Watson capped it off with a lovely lead. He knows when to lead. Graham Wright continues his run down through the field to recollect the ball from Shane Watson. Yes, good play by the Collingwood wingman. Breeze left to right. As he kicks it, goal, it swings back against the breeze and a goal. Brunton kicks in. Lewis flies high but can't take the mark. Doolan, little hand pass through the pack. Grabbed by Shaw, coming into the play now. Away to Williams. Paul Williams steadies himself right in front and kicks the goal. Now the short one is on. Watson up in front. Couldn't quite take the mark. Chance for Kepler to try and get it out. The dangerous Dacos. What can he do? He runs to the boundary line, hooks it back, and slams it through for a great goal. Lawson got a toe to the ball. Here's Doolan. Wright, his opponent, beats him. Graham Wright up to centre wing. Williams, who was an emergency, replaced Tony Francis in the selected side. A great kick to Dacos. We may see. Magpies winning by a big margin in the finish. Going for number four, Peter Dacos. Look at that. Kelly ripped around by Doolan then. At the back, Russell. High ball off oh, the forward pocket. Morwood, a mark. Good mark. Well, level scoring shots, 30 apiece, but 25 points the margin. Christian to Stasevich. The Pies running well. Williams. Has given a scintillating display across the wing since he came on in the second quarter. Long kick to full forward, a goal! Magnificent.
Well, it was a game uh, at Victoria Park against an interstate, one of the northern interstate clubs. I remember Peter Dacos and Craig Kelly were our main goal kickers, but all in all, it was a very lacklustre performance. I can remember that it was a fairly warm day, and I felt that that probably suited the Swans coming from the slightly uh, warmer climate. Certainly in the last quarter, we were in front, but we were just hanging on. I mean, we won by three goals, but there was absolutely no margin for error in that game. Salmon versus McEwen, a bit of a mismatch in height. And Salmon almost to throw by Fox to Harvey. The half-back line, Terry Danaher. Oh, a bad hand pass. Goes in to get it again. The look for ticket. Oh, it goes under his legs. Here's Morwood into the pocket. Oh, and the mark has been taken by the youngster Shane Watson. Watson from 12 metres, 45 degree angle, kicks. The Bombers by 10 points, set a bounce, very, very important. Stasevich, Scott Russell, now Francis from 60 metres, a booming kick. Fox versus McEwen. McEwen, a sensational mark. Well, you wouldn't wow. have given him a chance, Pete, would you? He was well over, he led to the right of Francis. He came booming down the ground. The ball going back, certainly in Fox's favour. The well played there by Ronnie McEwen. Made up good ground. Watch this again. He's well out of the game here, as you can see, but good grab by McEwen. What a fine grab. Terrific. He was out of the contest, Ronnie McEwen, and came from nowhere to take a great mark. I was all set to call it a mark to Fox. McEwen from dead in front. Kicks and goals. Dacos, Watson and Stasovic are his target. Stasovic gets there. Running Anderson around a bit. Plays on quickly. Will take Anderson on. Goes to the left. Kicks the ball towards McEwen. Oh. Anthony Danaher. Play on call, the handball by Salmon. Chris Danaher under extreme pressure, gives it up for Morwood, who kicks a goal. No take the mark, oh, look at the pace. Paul Williams, the long kick in the full forward. Watson, a oh, great kick by Williams and a terrific lead by the youngster. From 40 metres, directly in front, he kicks, it's a high one. It's going to be very close. It's a goal, Paul Williams. Kick it, went past it. Williams sprints clear with pace. Over the top, he'll probably go. No, he won't. Boy, oh, he ran a mile. Into an open goal. He ran 30 metres. Unbelievable for a goal. Perth McCarris and the Magpies are off and running to Paul Williams. Gee, there's a bit behind the play with Wallace involved there a moment ago. Right there, Bruce, yes. Quite right. Play cross on the end of it. Now Williams, long kick. Salmon's got to try and make the ground. Well played, Watson. Brilliant to Christian and McEwen for a goal. Put it down to Watson, though. Just not sure who's making the most mistakes at the moment, Ross. The players out there or the men officiating? <laughs> Here's Dacos from the pocket. Well, you'd expect that. A goal. Well, he couldn't take the mark. Oh, geez, oh. very badly. Russell should make him pay from 40 metres with a drop mark. And he does. Manson with a big thump. Here's Williams, one of these stars today. Swings onto the left boot. Dacos, great take. The handball to Christian. Christian goes back to Francisca. Sweeps it to Lehman. Lehman from 40 metres, an open goal. Left foot puts it through. Brilliant football, 10-4, 6-3. Yeah, it's not easy coming back from a new reconstruction. It's all right in a straight line, but you've got to twist and turn it hard. There's Francisca roving to Salmon. McEwen over the back is Hamilton. Oh, he's missed it, Hamilton. McEwen an open goal. Another mistake by Essendon. Ineffective tap away. Dacos from the centre on the left foot. McEwen and Hamilton. Watson to McEwen. Big Ronnie's kick three. Good, Good kick. kick, wasn't it a beauty to Stasevich? Very unselfish, Bruce. Played every game last season for Collingwood. Kicks his second. And now Stasevich takes it off both of them. Left foot under pressure, sat beautifully for Morwood. Misses Francis, but he can attack from 50 metres. A high drop punt. Ronnie McEwen, Watson, round the body, right. picks the goal. Can play this young fella. Still leaving, just pace took Brenvold on, bangs it back, McEwen run out, normally does well in that situation, and he does very, very well. 
from 20 metres out, right in front. Four to McEwen, 16 to Collingwood. They badly need three or four quick goals. Kickett's trying his heart out. Hasn't let Essendon down. Those had a hard job on day cost. Richardson, Starsevich. Well, he's got to make a move shortly, doesn't he? Ross Sheedy. Starsevich is cutting Greg Anderson. Ten kicks, two handballs, but 12 marks. Craig Starsevich kicks a goal. And floats it through. Christian works for him. Short. Fox holds him up. Watson's loose. Collingwood with some loose men. Into the centre. A mark card to McGuire. In 50 metres. McGuire from 40 metres. Drop that good kick goal. I thought that probably the first half of that game against a reasonably good opposition was possibly our best offensive half of football that we played almost for the year. Um, I remember Shane Watson and Ron McEwen were playing full forward, forward pocket, kicked uh, five goals and four goals respectively. But it was one of those very unusual games that come early in the last quarter. We probably only had 14 or 15 players that should have been on the ground and we just were stopping. Eston got to within uh, nine points and were really coming home hard and it really looked like we might have, uh, uh, circumstances uh, might have meant we could lose the game but we got a fairly fortunate I think 50 metre penalty which got us 15 points clear and we, uh, we did hang on and win but uh, given the number of players that were feeling fit and well uh, during the last quarter it was uh, almost a four points that we were just happy to escape with. Right half forward for Collingwood, Steins at the back, Manson Goodwin dives on it, flips it out the back door. Manson gets it to Williams. Williams kick across the centre half forward. Stasevich mark. Good hands. Big chance here for Collingwood's first goal. And a lovely kick by Stasevich as a goal. Right next to the behind post. Monkhurst in front. Just away came from Pickering. Collingwood chance now. Picked up uh, by Alan Richardson. Shot a goal, looks pretty good from the flank, and it's there. Kicks to left half forward. Watson, the youngster. Great snap, and gets it. Ronnie McEwen, about 30 metres out in the right forward pocket. Well, McEwen has been used as a full forward on other occasions for Collingwood. Mainly as a shock move, he starts at full back, plays there, then when they've got a problem, he goes down forward and does kick goals. And kicks them like that. Beautiful kick. Steins and Manson. Here's a chance for a goal. Watson has he got his second? He has. Monkhurst punches down well. Dacos has the run of the ball. Richardson hand pass on to Williams. And a goal. But now Collingwood will get it out through for Siska. He's run half a mile. Gets the hand pass away. McGuan, one way then the other. Short pass. Oh, a little too far for Dacos. Watson, kick across his body. And McEwen marks about 15 metres out. Well, he's a pretty good kick for goal, Ronnie McEwen. And he kicks that goal, sweeping around onto that favoured right side. The kick is ordinary. Oh, he could have nearly marked it, Manson. He punched it back towards the centre. Williams, oh, threaded his way through. Kicked it into the pocket. No mark. Certainly touched by the earlier player. McEwen to Christian, and Christian, well done. Summed it up on his non-preferred side. And a chance to get Collingwood's eighth goal. Dacos, what a wonderful kick, no mistake. Low trajectory kick, will it get the distance? It's going to be a real line goal decision. It's a goal! A quick kick, Monkhurst, 25 metre punch away, down towards half four. Dacos a steal, Starsevich, could he get another one? A hand pass, this could be a goal to Richardson, or leave it in his direction. Run away from half-back. Short kick in towards the centre's all right. Lehman 
shares it with Russell. Russell's kick across the half forward area. Mark was taken by Manson. Collingwood transfer play pretty quickly. Short kick. Collingwood Mark Watson. Well done, Manson. Camera angle, a good one kind of those Melbourne players. Watson's kick two. Watson's kick three. They still may get something out of it. No, Francisca leads now from half back. Collingwood rebound football. Graham Wright on centre wing. Away to Francis. Approaching left half forward. Kick into the pocket. All right. Good mark. Great hands in front of his face. Ronnie McEwen. Often it's let go, and it has been in this case. Francis kicks for goal. And it looks all right. I think he's gone over the line now, surely. No, he hasn't. Russell has it. Gets tripped up. It was accidental. And Collingwood through Francisca will go forward. Should have been a mark. Watson. Dacos. Spears at goal. He often gets goals. Look at that one. Magnificent stuff. Brad Rowe. Just is a nuisance for Schwartz. Now Russell. On to Manson. Manson shot for goal. May bounce through a goal. See it, Don Stasovic. Good long roost down towards full forward. Road taps down. Dacos, can he make it another one? He has! That's a goal! Tranter over the top of Lovett. Looks for Williams, couldn't find him. Williams spins out. Stasovic on the end of the hand pass from 49 metres. Drills it home! Watson tried to take the mark. Russell covering more ground than the early explorers. Chipped it in a row, a take off who marks. Well done, Scott Russell. Glenn Lovett. Dacos runs around, kicks a goal, and gets another one. Lot of ground. Stasovic has been a good player on the forward line. And from right half back, Collingwood with, with loose men everywhere. Krasiska, Christian, didn't see too much of him lately. Tranter has done well since he came on. Slips his opponent easily and marks well within kicking distance. I mean, good mark by Manson. Manson for his second. 30 metres out and gets it. Ball at centre half forward, there to be one. Russell, Tranter, nearly shared it. Short pass, all right, McEwen. Rowe did not expect the ball to come back as quickly, hence it's finished up with his opponent, McEwen. McEwen for goal number three. And he's done it very, very well. It was our first game for the year at the new MCG with the uh, with the, the new stand, the Southern Stand, and there was 60 or 70 thousand people there for the game. So it was a fantastic atmosphere. It was played on the Monday, the Easter Monday. Uh, I think it was Easter Monday, but it was certainly a Monday. Um, and uh, it, it was a close game all through. Really, we came on very strong in the last quarter. I think we might have even been a goal behind at three quarter time. But after battling hard all day, had a very good last quarter and got away and and won fairly comfortably in the end. So it was a you know, big occasion, big crowd, and a really uh, uh, morale-boosting win. Towards Taylor, Gaither playing in front. Does well, kicks into the pocket. Oh, a fine mark taken by Watson. Uh, floating in the breeze, and uh, he's got a terrific pair of hands. The young man from Montmorency. Kicks from the pocket, it's a lovely looking kick. He's goal kick and rightly so. Mick Gaper out to Williams. Collingwood are off and running. Paul Williams will bring it in towards the pocket. The players race in after it's thumped the ground. Who's there for the Magpies? It's McEwen around the corner. Ronnie McEwen and he's kicked a great goal. The centre wing. Manson will fly from the back. It hits the deck. Tony Shaw. Scott Russell. Paul Williams sprints. Pritchard brings him down. McGuan receives a hand pass. Mick McGuan stabs in the goal. And Mick McGuan has goal. In front of the pack, over the back, chance for Gavin Brown. He shoots it out wide to Michael Christian. Christian hooks it back to Manson. Manson can give it to Watson. Lehman. Now Tony Francis. He sprints in the goal the little rover and slams it through for a great goal. Oh, well done. Great play by Paul Williams. He sprints clear. He brings it in the heart towards Harford. Gowers at the back. The dangerous Dacos. Here's a goal coming up. Peter Dacos around the corner. Great goal.
Perth could have edged out. A chance for Starsevich to push it along. And Shaw. Allen intercepts. Lehman does it nicely. They could get one here. They could start something. Dacos has just kicked one. And he's now kicked another. Back come the Pies. Swings play up towards centre wing. Oh, fabulous mark from Paul Williams. Runs around Greg Beard. Good play. He'll go for the long kick. In towards full forward. Watson and Gowers. Watson out in front. And he breaks the tackle. He brings it into full forward. Dacos and Morrissey. Morrissey did it well, but the brilliant Dacos has got it. Around the corner goes Dacos. Peter Dacos is gold again. It's come alight in this quarter. Three goals. Over the top, McGuan, who can tap over the top. Again. Oh, six, just a little too long. But it's OK for Christian. The full forward. And Manson takes them up. Manson just inside 40. Shouldn't miss. And does it? Does he? No. McGuan. No one chasing. He can bounce his way down to half forward. Someone's going to have to come at him. He finds Dacos. Collingwood wanting goals badly. Dacos lets go with a torpedo punt. It's a magnificent kick! Can that lift the Maggies? What a goal! McGuinness over the top. Here's a chance for Tony Shaw. Francis the runner. Into half four, just inside 50. The mark taken by Williams. Paul Williams. Kicking from just on 50. Originally from North Hobart. Pretty good looking kick. He's goal. He's kicked his first. Try and get the tag away from uh, Francis and let him have a go against Johnny Platton. Tell you what, he doesn't miss many of these days, but he's on a pretty acute angle. They need it, the Magpies. As James Manson has kicked the goal on the siren. A hurried kick. Morrissey gets a bad bounce. Dacos was there. Dangerous Dacos. And there he is receiving from Brown. He dodges and weaves Peter Dacos. Hooks it to Watson, and the young fella has marked. Is that 50? Yeah. Uh, sort of a 50, isn't it? That sort of kick. Well, there it is. Watson a goal. Really got the wood on them, and with six top players out, they still haven't been able to beat them with a, almost a full side. Beginners versus Brown. Brown to Dacos. Will he kick a miraculous goal? No, he centres the ball, and Manson marks. Oh, he's off. Manson kicks, and James Manson goal. Nixon looking for his first touch, isn't going to get it. Krasiska gets it away to Lehman. A high kick to half forward. McGuinness edged out by Brown, who takes a fine mark. What can he do? Will he go over the top or have a shot himself? Over the top to Dacos, who should also go to Watson, and he'll go. Troy Lehman, Francis went without it. Here's a chance for Tranter. On to Tony Francis. In towards full forward, Morrissey leaves his man. Good mark, Brown. Round the day cross and Peter Day cross kicks another goal. Well, this was Anzac Day. It was a match that was played on the 25th of April out at VFL Park. And I think coming off the Monday game and then playing against Saturday against Hawthorne, who had played the previous Saturday, I, I don't think that certainly helped. But it's been well documented that Hawthorne have been a very good side recently in the last few years, and we've struggled to beat them. And the main reason has probably been Jason Dunstall and his uh, nine goals, I think, was the difference between the two sides. We got beaten by four goals, but it was, um, I think, eight or nine scoring shots. So we were quite comfortably beating. So. Very disappointing game overall. Monkhurst has also been struggling. Dacos, who's had a very good year. Wright has got the job on Sean Smith. Russell, who loves this scenario, to run and bounce and create some space. McEwen, the target. Ren fairly under the ball, gets a good bounce. He can kick a goal, big Ronnie. Though the handball's good, Watson will kick it. Straightens up, drop punt, goal. Good tackle, Brown. Gafer, Mickey Gafer from a standing position. Kicks it to centre-half forward. Punch away, more with the crumbs. Francis goes for goal, and what a magnificent kick by Francis. Williams and Francis, the two racehorses, may combine here. Williams goes to ground, throws it away in the end. Lehman, very good to Russell. A bounce. Go for the goal, Scotty. Drop punt, kicks it, and drills it through. 
wonderful football. Gets his kick away this time, back in towards the centre, and McGuan marks and does it very well in front of Sean Smith. McGuan, a very creative player. Kicks into the pocket. Watson the lead, Watson the mark. Well out in front of Martin. Wright has run onto the pocket. He'll go into an open goal. No, he'll stay and have a set shot from only 25 metres out. Collingwood, right chance to kick their fourth. He makes no mistake. James after it. Williams crashes through. Should have got the handball a little quicker. Now Russell. Well, Francis to Monkos, good kick. Excellent kick. Oh, plays on the day. Goss sits, waits, and kicks a goal, as only Peter can. Stevens near the centre. Short kick too far for Storitsky. And look how the poor kick will rebound now for Collingwood. Russell, 50 metres, inside, second bounce, steadies and shoots for goal and puts it through. And now Shaw just props it to Russell, swings at the perk, and the Collingwood fans say, have a shot, Gary. Well, he can from here. Drop punt, goes for it, and Norrick kicks it and does. Two and a half minutes left in the second quarter. High was Manson. Monkhorst kicks the goal. Marks quite safely. Kicking towards full forward. McEwen, great hands. Good mark by Ronnie McEwen. On a slight angle, great chance for Collingwood's ninth goal. Good kick by McEwen, it's a goal. Martin, the kick is not all that brilliant. Francis punches it away, goes after it again. Good recovery by the Collingwood Rover. The kick towards the forward pocket area. Watson, unselfishly, Christian running from centre-half back. Short pass, no mark taken. Gatherers by Manson, Kerrison under enormous trouble there. Kick off the ground, gather by Moore, it's a goal. What a great effort by Shane Moore. Boss, well done Wayne Schwoss. In goes Francis, tackled but gets his kick away. Into the pocket, Monkhorst. A little slow. Russell running beautifully. Centre half forward. Scott Russell pings away and puts it through for a Collingwood goal. Three goals to Scott Russell. Dacos runs Longmire off it very cleverly. Paves the way for Stasevich. A probing kick. Morewood well played. Now looks for some options. Quickly goes on to McEwen. Good strong mark running. 1 3 for McEwen. 45 metres out, drop punt. Good looking kick off the boot. Goal. No question about that. Now here's Russell from uh, 35 metres out, drop punt, goal. Four goals to Russell. And he is within distance, the angle of problem. Seven and eight for McEwen. Now goes short for Manson. Oh, good mark. Just ran underneath the ball, man. It's been able to get back. He's got excellent hands. Let's see how you go, Robbo. Drop punt. Key a good chance. Straight through the middle. 15, 19 to 9, 12. This really was one of, I think, the almost the gutsiest wins for the year. We came in at half time, and um, Shane Kerrison had torn a hamstring, so he had to be off the ground. And uh, Paul Williams had hurt his knee; he had to be off our ground. And we'd played a fairly big side even going into the game, so all of a sudden we had two of our more medium-sized players not on the ground at all, and uh, it was going to be a tough second half. Uh, and it was a very unusually big forward line. Shane Kerrison had to go back on because I think it was Troy Lehman got hurt and had to come off. He was worse injured. Limped around in the forward pocket with a badly uh, torn hamstring, heavy bandage, but still laid a couple of good tackles and uh, contributed a couple of goals. And, and in the end, we ended up winning by six or seven goals with uh, more or less a skeletal team. It really was, I think, uh, a great uh, reward for perseverance of the players who were on the field. Kernahan doing the ruck work. Christian at the back. Kicks the ball back in towards the centre. The bounce all too fickle for the Magpies. Free kick to Stasevich being held. Advantage is paid. Krasiska summed it up beautifully. Goes for goal. Gavin Krasiska from 50 metres. A lovely kick by Krasiska is Collingwood's first goal. 
Pocking kick it to the scoreboard end. He goes for the kick now, puts it high in the air. Sitting underneath this cave and oh! But Watson flies. No, couldn't take it on the half by there, McEwen. But he backs out of trouble. Shoots a long handball. Down to Dacos. He's in trouble. Drops it. He tries to recover. In comes Rowe. He's trying to lend support. Dacos is out. Oh! And the umpire said yes. But there, Dacos with a chance to score. And there it is, Collingwood's third goal. Gives the ball over to Richard, just coming on the ground, replacing uh, Christian Over to McGuire, who's played a great game so far. There's a yeah. pass, and what a ripper! A beautiful pass by Mickey McGuire. Waiting on McEwen to have this shot. There it is on the way. And there's no doubt about it, it's the goal to the McFarlane. Carlton have got the numbers, and there goes Dean through the pack. A chance here for Turner. Hits the ground, a handball over to McEwen. In turn, he handballs to Russell. He goes short, and he finds Richardson. A handball to centre half forward, and Dacos goes bang. Oh, and he's put it right through the centre for another one to Collingwood. Hand passes back into the centre. Alvin quickly on to Cavanagh, who stabs towards O'Sullivan. But a mighty grab coming over the top is taken by Krasiska. Kernahan unable to get a run at it. Dacos takes the hand pass. Oh, and a delightful little pickup by Russell in the middle. McEwen again. Now he's in exactly the same position, same distance. What's he going to do? Have a shot? No, just drift it down. McGuan. They need this to cut the margin to 11 points. Light rain just starting to fall, but he goals. Collingwood trails by 11 points. Little tap on by Tartron. Now Collingwood are away. The rebound footy finishes with Tony Shaw in towards the centre wing where the mark is taken by Russell. Hand pass over the top, but Ron has been fantastic. Kick into the pocket. Magnificent. Dacos. See, that was great delivery, wasn't it? Because he's normally a right foot kick. Well within scoring distance. He kicks the goal and he's kicked a miraculous goal. Down over the centre, no mark. Oh, the little fella comes in there, Shorey. And away he goes, the skipper of the Maggies. Down forward, Peter Dean couldn't hold the mark for Calvin. Picked up there, is it Turner? Turner snaps. He's put it through. Can the Maggies come back? That's the way the cookie crumbles when things are going your way. 19 minutes gone, then. 19 minutes gone. Oh, Spurley. Great mark to Brown. Brown right. Centre wing, Tony Shaw. Down to Peter on the 50 metre line, centre half back. Scott Russell kicks long in towards full forward. Here's a one on one contest. Ronnie McEwen, one hand. Here's a goal coming up for the Magpies. Kick by McEwen. Well, it was a fantastic game. I mean, the centenary game, it had been publicised almost like a grand final in the middle of the year. It was a Thursday night game, of course. Carlton had played the previous Sunday. We'd played the previous Saturday. So there wasn't a lot of chance to get uh, the players recovered. I thought the story of the match for us is we kicked poorly early. We had shots for goal and kicked behinds. Carlton's strength, of course, was their big marking forwards of Sporting, uh, Kernahan and Silvani. And we lost Michael Christian towards the end of the first uh, quarter with a strained groin. Had to send Craig Starsevich back into defence to cover that hole. And after that, Carlton took control. I mean, Kernahan played an excellent game, I can recall that. Kicked his five or six goals. And even at the end of the game, however, we kicked 9-18. And I thought that was the story. We got beaten by five goals. But I really feel had we kicked a little bit more accurately from our opportunities, we would have been, you know, right in the game. But uh, it was certainly an incredible occasion, gigantic crowd, um, very disappointing to walk across the MCG at the end of a game like that, uh, being the losing team. Um, but that was uh, nothing, you know, nothing we could do about it after that. But uh, just an absolutely magnificent occasion of a game. It was just uh, artificially promoted up as a centenary game, of course, but uh, fantastic atmosphere on the night. Great thing that Carlton Collingwood games can still, you know, that's really oh, the traditional rival. Yeah, absolutely no doubt. I mean, I know, I think a lot of teams build up to play Collingwood because of the love them or hate them thing, but Collingwood builds up to play Carlton. That's the one game I think where it's reciprocated in, to some degree, and there is always a different feeling going into a game at Collingwood when the Carlton is the opposition. 
I'm pretty sure it's the same at Carlton. So uh, when uh, when it happened to be a big game like this, the sort of basically the one game during the week uh, at that time of the year, it was just uh, really was a, you were like the centre of the football world. And I think it was 88,000 people uh, turned up, a uh, beautiful, balmy uh, autumn night. It was really a fantastic occasion. The only thing that spoiled it for us is we were the losers. One thing that we were very concerned with over the summer, uh, at the beginning of the year, was to have a practice game in Adelaide to experience playing at Football Park, and uh, we did that in February, and I think there was 25 or 30,000 people there then. And I think that helped us when we went over there for the, the real game. Um, it was played uh, late afternoon Sunday, and it started off a little, I think, five o'clock. Um, very wet night. Um, it was a start of a few. Uh, quite an unusual game for us. We got four goals behind uh, in the second quarter. Fortunately, we were able to kick the three or four at the end of the second quarter and get back on terms at uh, half time. And after that, really, the second half was just an absolute slog. I think we kicked seven or eight points in the third quarter when we had fair control of the game. Got away early in the last quarter. I think we might have got 11 points in front, but uh, it was a low scoring game. And uh, in the end, uh, five points, well, we know the result can probably go either way, but uh, when you play interstate, I think we're happy to accept a victory no matter how it comes. So we were pretty happy to get away from Adelaide with the four points. It was interfered with, though, was it was Heffernan. In fact, as the quick kick comes up towards the half the line, Dacos pushing and shoving. Dacos brilliantly did it. So did Run. Still going on, Dacos. Great play, Peter Dacos. Now Ronnie McEwen off the ground, suckers it in and puts it through. Great play, Dacos. When holding the man. No. Jamie Turner, a quick kick. In the wards, full forward. Here's a chance. As players come in from everywhere, but Morgan pops it and has gone. Dacos. Danger here. Real danger. 187 games coming into today. Drifts that across the face. McEwen almost from behind. Dacos in front has kicked it. Yes, he was definitely on. Dacos steals it. It could result in a goal. To half forward. Turner tries to get it on to Woods. The youngster has it now. Inside 50. A little chip to Dacos. He go over the top, will he? He'll get the free. Just gets his kick in time. A floating kick to half forward. Brown had a look. He thought about it. He's called play on. Hanley. Now Lehman. Can go short. This should be a goal to McGuan. It is. Woods will drive Collingwood forward again. He's made a difference since coming on the ground. McEwen at the back. A push out. And a great mark from Hanson. That is a brilliant mark, isn't it, Pete? He's been good at it. He's playing at centre half forward, Manson. And he's hurt himself, James, I think. He's not he's in a bit of pain there. That could be a tragedy for Collingwood at the same time. Let's watch McEwen. No. Yes, he snuck it back. He's brought it back for a goal. Trevor Poole tries to cut it off. Morewood taken out of it. The ball spills free. Picked up by Woods. Into the pocket he goes. A little too far. Dave Goss at the back. Can he produce something special here? Oh, no. yes he can. Kewan. Well, the kick to the half-back line, marked by Woods, who's looked very impressive. He's really done well, Tony Woods. Now he's 55 metres from goal. Good-looking kick in towards full forward. A great kick. It's a goal. This will lift Collingwood if he goes to the big top and puts it through. Here he goes. Torpedo doesn't quite get on to it. Might be a goal anyway. Oh, what poor defence by Geelong. I'd say the scoring end definitely will be the end that Geelong will kick. Oh. Oh, he's got a brilliant mark, Morwood. Fantastic mark. A chip pass. Here's their chance, the Magpies. At times can be inaccurate, Graham Wright. Now, let's see. All eyes on Graham Wright as he kicks the middle. So there's the siren. What a handy goal. 
not sponsored by Quid, obviously, Pete. Monkhorst. Morwood. What a mark. Quill kicks it right out wide as Forsman went past the ball. Scott Russell almost threw that one to Francis. A fine lets him get away with it all, oh boy. Tony Francis in towards the pocket. Morwood, a chance here for Collingwood. Shane Morwood puts it back. Well, it was uh, a game where Geelong went in as hot favourites. They'd had a very good win the, the week before, probably top of the ladder. We'd scraped in against the Crows the previous week. And again, it was a similar to the Crows game in that we were three or four goals behind early in the second quarter. Again, late in the second quarter, we had uh, a good burst and got on to terms at half time. And then after that, gradually just got clear, very wet, heavy conditions. Um, it was just a slog again. We won by 15 points in the end, but there was nothing in the game up until we halfway through the last quarter. Uh, but again, that was just Geelong was such a good opposition at the time and, uh, and the fact that we'd given away the three or four goal start, it really was a, an excellent effort to keep sort of fighting under adversity and eventually again come out in, in top in what was to be a lot of close games over this year that we fortunately had our nose in front in the majority of them. Well held so far in this game. The margin is six points, the Lions lead, Lehman, very high kick, they'll contest about 20 metres out, nobody touched the ball, here's Watson, Watson pulls it back, good looking, that's a goal. Lyon will get there first. To Brown, to Francis. Well, that one probably wasn't required, to Stasovic, good tackle on him. Francis, can he make amends? A very quick handball to Wright. Colin would have to regroup. Right kick. Oh, Jim McGuinn on his own. All alone. And he kicked a couple against uh, Western Australia. A long one. This one tucked away in the pocket. Drop punt. He's kicked it pretty well. This first. Club champion last year winning the Copeland. Francis, a good kick to uh, McEwen who got rid of Caven. Watson's half volley. Okay. Russell. Handball was hot. Well played. Ronnie McEwen. Great kick round the body. Lehman to half forward, Manson bringing up the ruck, got a good bounce so favourable and goes for goal and has kicked it. Well, what an interesting move as Manson's kicked his first goal. Booted down towards the half forward line by Russell, but in the road there is Caven. High kick back towards midfield, in front Abbott, fisted away. Russell again, across to Brown, chips the ball inside the 50, Manson in front. I suppose 40 metres out. A little closer. Here's Manson. Good looking kick. He's got it. Paxman, Stasovic, Dundas has kicked smothered by Russell. He's had a lift in the last minute. Wright's kicked to half forward. He's also been a little quiet today. Good one by Watson. Watson round the body for go for goal. Kicks it. Two to Watson. Collingwood responding now. Now right from the centre, with a long one to fall forward. Collingwood need a couple of early goals in this final turn. They might get one through Stasovic, runs in and goes. It's what the doctor ordered. 7, 9, 10, 12, Stasovic scoring his first. He's going to bang it uh, towards those two players. Seacamp in a very good position. Off his chest, Monkhorst roving it. Oh, good one. Turner was there. Turner to put Collingwood. A goal closer, and he squeezes it through. McEwen got a good bounce, and it kept in play, and Collingwood can rebound. Switches it inside to Richardson. Takes the bounce, steadies up, drop punt. Stevens, Manson will go high and take the beauty. Mark of the day. Ball Collingwood, Kelly to Richardson. Fraser, Russell, board of the centre, has a bounce. He's about 55 metres out, he settles, he goes long, it's close, going back the mark is held by Watson at full stretch, on a very awkward angle, he's got two so far, bends it back, the banana kick is good. 
Still trailed by 17 points. Moncourse, well done. Francis should have done the reflex handball. Instead goes to Manson. Manson draws Ruse to him. Stasevich should go inside. Maguan runs into kick a goal. Oh, grounded brilliantly. He worked that out very well. And now Maguan an opportunity for Collingwood. Props and kicks it high down towards the 50. Morris goes back with courage. Manson was up. Perk quick hands away to Lehman. 40 metres out. Lehman kicks. It's a goal. A bounce on the 50. The Magpies in. Morris. Blakey left it behind. Lehman. Pulls oh! It's bending back. Caven has got Dundas if he can find him. Manson with the fly. Well played, Stevens. Left foot, though, by Collingwood by Fraser. Seek oh, he's the guy. Perk goes. Collingwood in front. This game, I thought, in fact, was our first worst game for the year, to be honest. We'd beaten the Crows in Adelaide, we'd beaten the Geelong, we went into the Fitzroy game, and really, as coach, sometimes you can just see that you just can't get your players that extra 10% out of your players, and this was one of those days. I thought we had a, a, a terrible first three quarters. I spoke to the guys at three-quarter time, and I must say, I looked into their eyes and I couldn't see any fight in them. And I, as coaches do sometimes, got very angry and very upset and almost stormed off. And as I stormed off, I uh, can recall, I think it was Michael Gaifer, was the voice I heard regathering the players as a group. And uh, I think we're probably five goals or something behind at that stage. And uh, I, I, by the time I got up the coach's box, uh, we'd already kicked the first goal in the first few seconds of the last quarter. And effectively had a very good last quarter, got three points in front with a couple of minutes to play and uh, Fitzroy took the ball down the other end and they got the last goal of the game. So it was a terrible first three quarters, I thought, but a, a good last quarter. And uh, again, we got into these, another close game. If you get into enough close games, you might win your percentage, but you're going to lose your percentage. And it wasn't a game I thought we deserved to win. It was a very lacklustre uh, sort of performance overall uh, compared to what we come to expect of our guys. That was the fairy tale finish with... Uh Pert yeah, and then Ruse. That's right. Well, Gary Pert was having a fairly ordinary day at full back, so we put him down the other end at full forward, and he kicked the goal that actually got us the lead. And poor Ruse, who'd been playing centre half back for Fitzroy, but certainly running deep into their forward line, playing that role, uh, crumbed the, the ball off a marking contest in the goal square, snapped the goal. And uh, yeah, it was a very exciting win for Fitzroy, but uh, it was a match we felt if we'd have stayed in front, we would have stolen. But nevertheless, we still would have liked to have stolen it because I mean, we know the result's the only thing that counts. But not a game that we thought we deserved to win over the four quarters. Would be that be one of the games that might have, you, you look back on the season and say, had we won that game, we might have finished second? Is that a game you would look that way? I think we look at our close finishes and we say, had we won another couple of close finishes, we might have finished on top of the ladder. But I think conversely, if we'd lost a few more of our close finishes, we might not have even made the finals. So I don't, I don't if, we, if, we're getting, if we're talking about our percentages, we won a large percentage of these close games. So I think uh, we won as large a percentage as you could, you could hope to, I think, if you get into these really you know, games that go a kick or two either way. Go with him. Kelly stood his ground and did it well. They've got an open space here, Bruce. McGuan takes off. Look at Mickey go with a second one. Swings it inside to Brown. Quick reflexes to Williams. He should finish it off for a goal. Drop punt, go for it, and kicks it. One bounce for Mickey. A second. Manson providing a lead. McGuan with a probing kick. Shanahan getting back. Manson off the ground. Lehman's just come onto the ground. Left foot for goal. Goes for it across the face. Scores it. Burke. In chips Craven. St Kilda get away. Craven's kick. Wide to the wing, G Gavin Brown, tackled, but does it very well. Saunders, McGuan from 45, McGuan goes for goal, it's going to roll through, it's a goal to McGuan. 
chance for Richardson. Kick is good. Gay for Marks at left half back. Handball over the top. This man running all over the ground, McGuan. The playmaker for Collingwood. The kick not bad. Centre half forward. Starcevich takes the mark. Play on quickly. There's a player at centre half forward. The kick is very ordinary. It chops off at the 50 metre line. Oh, here's a goal. Lehman, you can bounce it, but he doesn't. He kicks the goal. Putting it well out in front of his teammates. Gaither kicks the ball back towards centre half forward for Collingwood. Oh! He's kicked it, and nearly, it's got to be a free kick anyway, isn't it? And Graham Wright is a very good kick for goal. And Graham Wright is an excellent kick for goal. Collingwood has kicked the last four goals in this match. Montcourse lines them up, drop punt is a goal. Winmar with him, Lehman off the ground. A difficult and important ball to be won. Williams crashes his way through. Caught. Still with Collingwood. Brown run down. Winmar runs over the top. Lehman with a chance. A oh, well play. Francisco should handball. He does. Watson to go and go. The first one they got away with. They didn't get away with the second. Collingwood loose players. There's three of them out there. Got a panic here, Robbo. Francis goes over and gives it to Saunders. Saunders must deliver this. He does. Oh, critical. Sasevich on his own. Can kick this goal. He can kick it. He does. Tony Shaw up towards half forward. Chance for Russell. Just gets his foot to it. Lehman. He's got a chance to it. Lehman. No. Williams. Handball over the top. Sasevich drops it. Oh, round the net. He's still got it. McEwen may kick it anyway. He does. Been taken back, Robbo. I it was Starcevich free kick there. Yeah, high tackle. I wasn't watching it. Well, Starcevich a chance to get his second goal within a minute. He doesn't miss. It's another one to Collingwood. Well, we went into the St Kilda game. Again, it was at the MCG. A gigantic crowd, 80-odd thousand. You know, fantastic atmosphere. We had a very poor first quarter. I think for memory St Kilda might have kicked 2-9 or something like that in the first quarter and probably their inaccuracy uh, kept us in the game. But thereafter we worked our way back to on terms. Uh, Gavin Brown went to centre half forward in the third quarter and played a, an exceptional second half down there and we did get 11 points in front at some stage early in the last quarter and to lose by a point from that position was extremely disappointing. I mean. Certainly we had a very uh, poor first quarter, but we did get in front and whenever we were a couple of goals in front to uh, some stage in the last quarter and we uh, end up losing, well, there's a, you know, you're pretty disappointed in the, uh, in the end result. And uh, so the two, two games that we lost by, uh, by a kick in consecutive weeks was, uh, you know, one of those things you, uh, everyone asked themselves if this had happened and if that had happened. Uh, so there's plenty of soul searching, but uh, all in all, a, a disappointing day, even though it's only a one point loss. Wright goes in applying the tackle. Russell, long kick inside the 50. Warsfold is there. Rowe has been pretty uh, prominent on the forward line so far. Brad Rowe, the ex Brisbane Bear. A great kick for a goal. Boundary throw in, left forward pocket. Stasevich gets it down. Saunders dragged off the football. Here's a chance for Francis. Kicked by Tony Francis and a good mark. Starcevic and he kicks the goal very quickly. Here's Brad Rowe, who's been one of the players best. Puts it out in front for Wright. Graham Wright will kick the goal. Long time between drinks for Collingwood. Oh, the goal umpire is going to signal a behind there, but John Warsfold kicks it back into play. Manson. Towards half back. Montforce, well done. Manson about to come on for Collingwood. Don't know who he's going to go off. Absolutely devoid of a forward line, Collingwood. Brad Rowe in front, what a mark. So barreling it gone from a long way out this quarter and missing everything, but Rowe steers this one through. His second goal against Kerrison. Kick by Krasiska has been marked by Brown. 26 seconds left. They need a goal, Collingwood. Well, no short passes on, so Brown's going to have to go long. He gets hold of the torpedo. It goes into the square. No mark. Brad Rowe, he's got it. Oh, he's oh. kicked the goal. 
Terrific stuff by Brad Rowe to get his third goal. He could be within two kicks if they can manage a goal here. Shaw goes backwards. McGuan snaps off the left and kicks it. Oh. Goal. They've lost their last two games by a point and three. And they won their previous two by 15 and five. So three of their last four games have been decided by a kick. On course again to Lehman. He's gone. Oh, Troy, well done. Broke the tackle, Troy Lehman. He's kick inside the 50. Rose there. Mate Waring should have taken the mark. Manson taps the ball out to a teammate. On all fours with Saunders. A great tap out to Lehman. Rowe again. He's kicked three, Brad Rowe. The hand pass in. McGon well unmarked in the goal square is Brown. There's a kick in it. Wrench free by Saunders. Francis in after it. Get boot the ball. It's a high ball. Oh, oh it's Williams! Williams is marked. Tasmanian, best first year player last year. Collingwood. What pressure. We have a draw. The scores are level. Now, this is important. Who will get it away from the centre? Oh, what a game we've seen here at Subiaco. Monkhorst bangs it. Brown bangs it. It's up to 50 metres. Oh, Rowe! Williams! Collingwood will score and win the game. Will they? Lehman! He scored. It's a point. My golly! Seven seconds left. Collingwood will win the game with that break from the centre by the best man on the ground, Damien Monkhorst. And ladies and gentlemen, listen... Deathly silence, Monkhorst marks the siren sounds and Collingwood have won by a point and what a win that is for the Magpies. Well again we went to Perth and I think it's been well documented that the Perth trip is the hardest game to come home with a, a win of the whole season. Uh, one o'clock, as we were uh, just finalising the team, the heavens opened. It rained heavier for about half an hour, almost, than I can ever recall. So the ground was virtually like a lake about that stage. Uh, we, we had 21 players over there. We withdrew Mark Richardson from the team, seeing he was a tall marking player, and I think Darren Saunders replaced him in the 20 to try and balance it up. The Eagles got that goal or two in front early, uh, but the ground was gradually drying out, and uh, but still probably wet, pluggy conditions. And uh, Brad Rowe played his first uh, senior, not his first senior game, but a very productive game for us early. Uh, uh, kicked three goals as a small forward. That was important. We were always not too far behind, but really dragging the train. I don't know whether we really looked like winning the game, but we weren't far behind. Lost Craig Kelly, of course, with the knee injury in the third quarter, which uh, ended up being the end of the year for Craig. Uh, we went into the last quarter, only two or three goals behind, and coming home with what was a little bit of a bruise. So we, we were in the game, and I, don't, I think the last quarter will live in all our memories for a long time. Uh, we, we had a lot of shots at goal, uh, missed some vital shots, gradually got closer and closer, till I think it got to the stage there was probably a minute to go. I'm sure all Collingwood will su will supporters will remember that Paul Williams uh, took a mark. Uh, we were seven points behind, we would have been. Took a, no, we were a goal behind. Uh, and I, the Eagles had a couple of shots for goal about the 20 to 25 minute mark. One hit the post, I think. And anyway, that, so we've got to into time on, we were a goal behind. And of course, Paul Williams took the mark up forward, kicked the goal to make us level. Uh, the word had come up from the boundary line that there was only 30 seconds to go or whatever it was and uh, when uh, Damien Monkhurst thumped the ball out of the centre bounce, uh, Gavin Brown thumped it on further, Brad Rowe grabbed possession of it, hand passed to Troy Lehman and he, he kicked the point that gave us the win and to go from losing the game to drawing the game to winning the game in the space of 30 seconds was just like an incredible thing for for everybody, I mean, particularly I think people watching on television who knew the position of the time clock. I mean, players aren't aware of those things. So to, to, it was just an incredibly exciting win, particularly when you're in Perth and you know that games are tough to win over there. So that last 30 seconds, I think, will live in our mind for a long time. Craig Kelly, that, uh, that must have been a big blow. Like yeah. all the excitement after the game, game yes. must have been fantastic, but yes. Craig Kelly's injury. Well, I think even from as soon as he'd done it, um, it was fairly obvious that it was a serious knee injury. Um, so that did, did temper everything. Um, 
it's uh, you know injuries are an occupational hazard in the game but uh, when they hit a severe one hits like that it does uh, Craig's been such a strong part of our team both in the performance and the I think the character and personality of the team it was uh, always going to uh, be a big blow to us uh, the fact that we were going to lose him for the duration of the season he's had uh, already four possessions Tony Shaw be a good duel between he and Atkins Experienced campaigners, both of them. Kick towards full forward. Mark is to Monkhorst. Excellent mark. In well, this is Ross Dunn's precious 10 metre square, I think, from 1977. Monkhorst kicks for goal. The crowd at the back of the goal say it's a goal. And so does the goal umpire. Down there in that forward line. Good luck to him today. Wind gets a hurried kick, but straight to his opposing Ruckman. He thought about the hand pass on to Graham Wright, but then elected to go the other way to Mickey McGuan. A set shot, 46 metres. It's a good looking kick from Mick to go. Looked for Stanfield, didn't find him. Krasiskas from 50 metres. It's a long kick. It's a good kick. He's got it. The Maggies have hit the front. Two points, the margin. Oh, kick in, puts Eppleston under pressure. He's going to get caught. Away goes Wright. Graham Wright from 30 metres, left foot, goal! Goes back towards the vacant half-forward area for Collingwood. Stasevich is there. Kick across his body, effective. Francis gathers, hand pass to Fraser. Mark Fraser, who's very, very quick, kicks it towards full forward. Marking contest, Roth has got it. Campbell misjudged it. He'll be a little bit nervous. He think he's lost his nerves now, though. He has kicked his first goal. A little kick off the ground. Collingwood's advantage. Fraser, well taken. One bounce. He may even go for a second. His kick to the front of the square. Rocker! He's got it in front of Tony Campbell. If it's not one man at the other end in Del Rey, it's Rocker down the other end. The Collingwood goal here will make it just three points the difference once again. He makes no mistake. One average is almost 22 kicks a game. This is an important one for him and the Pies. He's put it straight through the middle. Graham Wright, handball sweeper over the top. Tony Shaw, he's got McGuan in support. Watch McGuan deliver the football. And he does it well with a bit of a banana kick up towards full forward. Oh, that's a push. Campbell pushed out. Blake and Rocker will take the free kick right in front of goal. And now he's kicked three goals, so it's a good effort. Starsevich at half back. Good kick. A beauty. Pinpointed to Saunders. Fresh man on the ground. Fresh legs. Where's a Rocker? There he is. Well, that was a good kick too, Ross, wasn't it? Rocker from 40 metres. On the side. Saverio Rocca has kicked it. Liberatore, he is a little terrier. Saunders again. High kick to full forward. The pack crash it down. Rowe is there. Beautiful handball. Well, this was, I think, probably the sixth consecutive game that was in the balance at the 20, 25 minute mark of the, the last quarter. It was testing everybody's nerves, I think. Um, and Footscray were going well. They were up near the top. Big game at the MCG again, big crowd. Um, pretty close game all through. Uh, we really did come on strong in the last quarter, which had been a characteristic of the team's performance, I think, over that previous month or five, six weeks. We'd almost been behind at almost every three-quarter time. But the players had developed the ability just to keep playing the match out, and that was how this Footscray game developed. We, we peppered away at the goals in the last quarter um, and only won by six points, but it was also six scoring shots, so the match could have gone either way, but it was really quite a good victory in the end. Uh, Severio Rocker played his first game at full forward, kicked four goals, looked dangerous doing it, and. Uh, Again, we would hope that that may have been a first game in a long career for him, which uh, in retrospect we'll know in the years ahead. But uh, 
So it was quite a, quite a good win against another side that was right up in, uh, in contention. But we came off the bye, we came into the Richmond game. I, I think the most optimistic thing about this game, we ended up having a good win after not, we again came home hard in the last half that uh, Severio Rocker and uh, Peter Dacos formed our full forward line and I think kicked 13 goals between them. Now that was quite exciting I think to see uh, the, just, just the scoring power when those two players were both playing well at the, at the, uh, at the one time. So we got the win and uh, had some optimism that uh, at least the firepower may have uh, uh, may have uh, be a little bit better with those players together than maybe it had been for most of the first half of the season. Again, it was a carbon copy of a lot of our games. A, a struggle early, uh, whether it was our sort of poor performance or the Bears playing well. Uh, there was certainly not much in the game going into the second half. We gradually got clear. Again, the optimism that uh, Rocker and Dacos kicked nine goals between them, but had 18 scoring shots between them, which was probably just as optimistic. But it really, it was, it, we came off, there had been the state game the week before. I, I'm not sure whether it was the West Australian, the game against West Australia at the MCG or the South Australian one. Tony Shaw had played in the state game, Gavin Brown, had missed that particular state game, I think, with his sore stomach muscles. And I think from this point onwards, Gavin, whenever he played, was playing under difficulties for the duration of the season, that uh, he, his, his injury problems first came up playing a Saturday game and then the state match at the NCG against West Australia, playing the two games within the four days. He was really never the same player again and was kind of uh, fighting off these stomach muscle problems really for the rest of the season. I think we've become to learn that regardless of the opposition travelling interstate is a gigantic disadvantage. I think we went up to the Swans and played them on the Friday night in Sydney after playing in the Bears Saturday night the previous week. I mean, quite obviously, Saturday night is a fairly sleepless night no matter what in a strange bed, etc. Flew home on Sunday morning and then flew back up to Sydney on Friday. Now, that's the excuse for what turned out to be a fairly ordinary performance, I thought. I mean, I've got no other excuse, put it that way. Um, the Swans certainly were competitive. Uh, we eventually won comfortably in the end by the three or four goals, but halfway through the last quarter, they got really close on the scoreboard. So it was a game that we won, but not a game that we would sort of remember that anything uh, terribly positive, I thought, came out of it. Just, just a struggling win. Still at half foot, a quick little kick by Isa, grabbed by Mick Gaper. What's he doing down there? To the pocket, flood races at it. The bounce will favour Rocker. Rocker cleverly, Dacos, intelligent play, Dacos. Kick off the ground, and it's a goal. Bounce back in the centre, Collingwood take it away through their captain, Tony Shaw, up towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Rowe swoops on it. He's going to have a shot for goal, Rowe. It may be another Collingwood goal, it is. Collingwood on fire. I don't doubt this young man's courage. He was hit with everything in Perth by Johnny Warsfold. He's kicked to the goal square, punched away by Flood. Tony Shaw just fumbled. Dacos a chance. Oh, looking for the free kick, Peter Dacos. He got it. It's certainly um, ominous signs for the Bombers with Dacos. This is his fourth kick, and he makes no mistake. Tries to get onto the favoured left side. Away to kick it. He goes for the torpedo pump kick. It's gone to the goal. Oh, what a great effort, Gary Perth. Now McGuan kicks it up near the 50-metre line. Rocker, strong hands, big man. He kicks a long way. Rocker, his shot is a goal. Ridley runs from the wing and kicks it in towards full forward. And a top effort by Richardson. Fantastic, Mark. A long, long time. Here's Stasevich running up through the wing. Kicks it 
50 metres from goal, excellent mark by Rowe, he plays on quickly. Handball over the top was too severe for McMullen. He's going to go for Dacos. Can the ball sit? Oh, look at this. Great stuff, Dacos. Collingwood goal. Here's a chance for McMullen. His kick is not too bad. In towards centre-half forward. The bounce is a little awkward. Hills. Dacos. Oh, hell. Surely a free kick for Dacos. She's yeah. clever. Dacos. The shot for goal is good. He's kicked his third. McCartney is 50 metres from goal. He kicks it into the square. McEwen in front. At the back. Oh, McMullen. What's he done? Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Fortune for Collingwood. McGuan marks. Kicks it wider. Pert. Up from full back. Gets around Kilpatrick. And kicks for goal. Gary Pert. Here's Gaper to the half forward line. Should Mark Stasevich and does. He's off and running. Gavin Fasiska. Danger here for Essendon. Tony Francis, oh, free kick down the ground. This will be a goal to Collingwood. Stupid, Collingwood. stupid play, Essendon. They can lose the kick here. This will be a free to Collingwood in the goal square. Let's have a look. He kicks. The Essendon player comes late. Stupid. Was it Michael Long? Yes, it was. Well, it's a kick right in front of goal to Rocker. Directly in front, Severio Rocker. Puts it through. He's got plenty of time. Oh, he's caught. Loses it dangerous because Rowe is like a well he swoops in after he bounces oh have a look at this Brad Rowe no nope, time he's going to kick this a magnificent attempt what a great goal well there's another carbon copy of, uh, of a lot of our games a blockbuster game at the MCG gigantic Friday night game against Eston, 70 or 80,000 people there, you know, incredible atmosphere yet again. I thought we played fairly well. I mean, Eston had won, I think, six or seven straight going into that game, so they were in good form. And it was a tight game early. Um, we eventually came home and won by three or four goals in the last quarter, but I think we won by two goals, ten behind, so we'd had a lot more scoring shots. and. Uh, you know, in the big games when there's a lot of people and a big atmosphere, to, to get home in the last quarter and, and finish the game on strongly, um, I think it was a, you know, a game that we were well pleased with when it finished. Gives away ground, Russell fumbles. Hand pass, not bad, Rocker. He's too slow, but he's going to get his kick away. It's into the square, it'll bounce through for Collingwood goal. Out the side of the ground, Brett Lovett can't take that mark. Scotty Russell recovers very well and could set something up here for the Pies. One bounce, has a second bounce, and from 45 metres, set sail and has kicked Collingwood's second goal. McCartney through the centre, the pass. Oh, it was a grass cutter. Matthew Marnie, Scott Russell chops it off. Scott Russell kicks a goal. Ruck contest, Montcourse gets it. Williams runs onto it beautifully, and then it sits for that player. Hand pass just a little short. Morewood made it better. Russell runs lovely, Scott Russell. Little kick, fantastic. Dacos will kick a goal. Beautiful football by Collingwood. Premiership stuff. The ball back near the centre. Mockhorst, Obst, Francis. Well done, Tony Francis, to break that tag. McCartney, his kick. Oh, Rock has got it. Judged it a little bit better. Well, it's a pity that Schwartz has had to be moved to defence, Robbo, because uh, he's very constructive around half forward for the Demons. Rocker's shot is good. Rocker, thumped away by Schwartz. Morewood and Rocker. Yes, another goal for the Magpies. Good play by the young full forward. Yes, terrific stuff from Monkhurst out of defence. He's helped out there all day. Manson in front could have been interfered with. No, Mark Fraser with his pace gets around Jimmy Stein very easily. And from about 40 metres out, set side. And a great goal, Mark Fraser. Terrific goal. Path wasn't no impeded, idea. he got the knockout, everything was in his favour. Yes, anyway, he gets a hand pass to Russell and Morewood. Pretty creative across half four today, Shane Morewood, up against Matthew Phoebe. Advantage in finesse. So Morewood, a chance to put Collingwood two goals in front. And a very accurate quick kick, another goal to Collingwood. Handball, back towards Francis. Lovely little hand pass for McCartney. Collingwood steamrolling now towards goal. Turner's kick, excellent. Williams marks. There's three players to one and half forward. He spotted one of them, it's Russell. A 
and Russell marks about 45, maybe a little closer, 40 metres from the Collingwood goal. Kick number 15 coming up for Scott Russell. He's kicked two. Oh, it's a lovely kick. He's kicked three. And look at uh, Monkhurst. He's back there by himself. He unloads with a big torpedo. A terrific kick from Morwood. Another goal to the Magpies. Boundary throw in. James Manson doing the ruck work for the Magpies. Over the top is Andy Goodwin, but only as far as Tony Shaw. And I think he may have threaded it through. He has a great goal from the Melbourne skipper. Todd Viney. Brad Rowe has the football, can't break clear. Andy Lovell well tackled by Tony Francis. And Tony Francis will get the free kick. Andy Lovell, you're a little stiff, my son. Yes, but uh, Tony Francis, second highest tackler in the AFL competition behind Tony Liberatore. A very hard-working rover is Tony Francis. Pass and a good mark taken by Williams. And he's well within scoring distance. Chance for Williams. He's directly in front and he kicks the goal. Melbourne had had a very good patch the previous month. They beat the Crows in, in Adelaide the previous week, I think it was. So they were always going to be a difficult opposition. Um, we, we struggled during the game, but we did get three or four goals clear. Uh, we couldn't stop Alan Jakovic in the second half for Melbourne up the other end. I think he kicked seven goals, five in the end. But I think it was one of our, certainly, certainly our more disappointing losses for the year, only on the fact that we were in front. We had the game relatively in control, but the last 20 minutes of the game, we allowed them to kick the few goals. Uh, they got three points in front in time on. Uh, with those will remember that Peter Dacos had a snapshot for goal uh, that was a goal, um, and, but the, uh, there was a free kick paid on the periphery of the play, which probably was a fairly soft one when you look at the replays. Maybe if that goal had been allowed, we would have hung on and won the game, but Melbourne went down the other end and, uh, and kicked the goal and won by nine points. And, was the first game we'd, we'd lost at Victoria Park over the last 12 months. And uh, losing is bad enough at the best of times, but I think losing at our home ground is, uh, is something that doesn't happen often. And when it does, you, uh, everyone's feeling fairly down in the mouth about it. Gave up, back pocket. Got the job on Morrissey. Out wide, Russell. Prolific possession getter is Russell. Across to Richardson. Looks promising as Pert gets a kick. It's a long one, really down in no man's land. But Morwood running onto it. He can go on quickly. He does. Left foot. Can he spot Hardy, who's just been included in this side? Foreman Brisbane Bear, Footscray player, puts it on its way. Has it come back? It has. Harrison. Dacos. Now Francis. Centre half forward. Look at Monkers. Good positioning, big fellow. He's got no one around, but he's indecisive. No, too slow. Everything covered. He's got Tony Must Shaw on now. the left if he wants him. Must have a shot now if he's got the breeze behind him. He's 45 metres from goal. We'll let this ball go from about 50 metres out. They need this one, Collingwood. Trailing by eight points. It's a good kick off the boot. It's got the distance. What about the accuracy? It's there. Ball spills out. Christian, who's been back forward now on the back line once again. Turner can't control it. Edge of the square. A quick ball. You can see there the pressure by that quick kick. Williams. Now Francis picking up a lot of kicks around midfield to win his fellow. Back to Williams. Again back to Francis. What can Collingwood mount? They're looking for Dacos. And there he is. He hasn't let them down number 35. Well done by Francis. Started on the wing. Followed up. He combining well with Williams. And as a result, the ball with Peter Dacos. Peter Dacos. The ball is on its way. And it's there. That's his first. And Collingwood's fourth. 6-5-21, Hawthorne. Collingwood, 4-5-29. Turner held by the arm. Yes, coming back off. Well, the maybe paid. advantage. A terrific umpiring decision if it is. Brown's kick up towards half forward. Mew goes back with the flight of the ball. In comes Rowe. He's 50 metres from goal. The kick has been chopped off. Picked up by McCartney. McCartney was recruited as a full foot. Dacos! Well done, the champion. Good use of the body. 
free kick even holding on from Collins. Couldn't miss from there, could he? He doesn't. He kicks his second goal. Richardson's kick finds Kerrison. Kerrison transfers play. Goes back to Richardson, who's made good position in front of the square. He bangs it a long way out towards the wing. Tony Shaw marks. Sweeping hand pass. Looks for Christian, who waits for it to bounce. Don't know whether that was the correct ploy. Handball over the top. Brad Rowe, but Fraser is very quick. Oh, look at this man go. Back him in the store gift if you ever see him start. Magnificent football, Colin, with a goal. Mark Fraser's first goal. Black and white magic says it all. The ten possessions he's had have all been quite effective. Brad Rowe gets his foot to the ball. Kicks it wide into the pocket. Hardy. Williams. Very quick Paul Williams. Can't break the tackle. Yes, he can. Handball over the top. Into the square. Kerrison. They're going to mess it up. No, they're not. Kerrison's going to kick. A. Looks like a goal. It is. Kerrison kicks his first goal. And he will kick it back into play for Hawthorne. He goes pretty well straight up the ground. Nice kick by Chris Langford. Fraser. Rowe. Make it one here. Brad Rowe streaming. And he puts it through. Colin would get the goal. Well, in a, in a tight season, even though our win-loss ratio was fairly good, we certainly weren't entrenched in the top bracket of the ladder, or even in the finals for that matter. And we travelled to VFL Park to, to play Hawthorne. Um, much of our, uh, our strategy was involved with uh, preventing Jason Dunstall from kicking the high number of goals, because that was a regular occurrence, him kicking eight, nine or ten. And we kept him to two goals, but uh, Paul Hudson, one of their other forwards, bobbed up with I think it was seven goals in the in the end we didn't think it was we didn't play well but it was a tight game we had shots early in the last quarter I and mean, Brad Hardy had two or three shots for goal that would have taken us almost within a kick of Hawthorne within a few points here we, we kicked behinds uh, eventually in the last five minutes of the game they kicked another goal and and beat us by I think another you know, 15 points so it was it was a disappointing result again because we needed the win uh, but in, in, in a lot of ways, we thought uh, Hawthorne, having been our, something of our bogey team that was well publicised, uh, we thought it was a game that we, were, we had a great chance of winning. Mick McGuan didn't play, of course. He'd been injured uh, the previous week, and uh, Gavin Kuziska didn't play with a hamstring injury. So uh, we, although we lost and didn't play well, uh, again, like for the majority of our games for the year, there was very little in it on the scoreboard at the, uh, at the end of the game. The pressure was really on now, having lost to Hawthorne and Melbourne in the previous two weeks. I mean, we were fighting for our place in the finals. The, I think the equation was fairly clear. We had to win two of our last three games. And uh, we had a, quite a good game against North early. We had sort of worked our way uh, to, I think, five or six goals clear. Jason McCartney, young player who'd filled the centre-half back role fairly well after we lost Michael Christian and Craig Kelly, had done an excellent job on Wayne Carey, North centre-half forward, kept him pretty much out of the game. But Carey and North Melbourne got away from us early in the last quarter, and the game that we should have had won, we got five or six goals clear, eventually North got eight points in front, and uh, I think it was going through everyone's mind that, uh, gee, we really put ourselves under pressure now. But as the guys did for the majority of the year, the last five minutes, they turned the game round again, which very rarely happens in those circumstances. Gavin Brown uh, kicked a goal, and then Severia Rocker kicked a goal with a minute or so to go to put the team six points in front. So it was a game we'd had a fairly good first three quarters, but a terrible first 20 minutes of the last quarter. Uh, but we really, you could see that our midfield running game, that the players were tiring. Um, about uh, late in the third quarter. You could sort of see it happening and then North started to get a little bit of the ball and really we had, we faded really badly the first half of the last quarter and uh, to, uh, to turn it round in the last five minutes and uh, salvage a win were, which had uh, almost been turned into a loss was, a, was almost a bonus four points in the quest to uh, get enough wins to finish high up in the finals. Fraser Brown in the right back pocket takes the defensive mark. Haythorne misses it. 
Murrell needs a work. Athorne lacking support. Shaw to Russell. So a chance for Collingwood off the turnover. Centering kick. Russell is good. Now Fraser, a question of accuracy. Runs to 40 metres out. Kicks. And I think he's got it. He has. Terrible miss by Mark Athorne. And they pay the price. He must have just scraped it in, Ross, because the way the goal umpire moved across. Bill Hanna on the burst, his second bounce. He did this last week. This time he runs into a dead end. He's penalised for holding the ball. 50. Yes, and 50 against the Blues. Well, we saw a searching run from Hanna last week that resulted in a behind, as it turned out, but he certainly electrified the crowd. That time trying to do much the same thing, but it was a strong tackle on the end. Yes, his teammate bumped him into McMullen, who affected the tackle, trying to ship it. There's Rocker, waiting for the long ball. So McMullen, plenty of possessions. Kicks from about 65 metres out. Rocker in front, juggled attempt, not paid. McGuan, I think he's got it. He has. Nick McGuan bobbing up in front of the pack. Gets Collingwood second, and they trail by only seven points. And if Williams had got it out of the centre, Williams slaps it down, sporting. Takes a dive, comes out of it, Perth, a quick kick to the advantage of Brown. Pretty quick disposal, again, McGuan with a forefront. Monkhurst will give it over. Jamie Turner at left centre wing, spears in the pass. Oh, beautifully delivered to McMullen. Can he finally break the ice? Yes, sir, he's got one. He's kicked one four now after four straight behinds. On down the ground, a couple of Collingwood players, one of whom is McGuan, who'd run on, but he missed the mark. He's got a free kick. It must have been the interference, Dennis. I couldn't see it being marked. No, he's about 60 metres out. The siren may beat him. They need to mark this one. It's almost siren time. Shaw's taken the mark. There's the siren. Tony Shaw after the siren. Kicking from about 35 metres out. It bends back. Oh, that's a skipper's kick. Quarter time. But Waverley and Collingwood grab the lead. For the first time, they lead by four points. But Jamie Turner, again to the forefront. Gavin Brown, left centre wing for Collingwood. Little chip pass, and successfully finding McMullen, who had a great first quarter, kicked four behinds initially, and then kept it off with a beautiful goal. Walker, too far underneath the ball. Dacos has been quiet. Off the ground, Mr. Magic has done! It was a fluke, except he does it too often, Ross, for it to be a fluke. Well, but that's only his second kick, but what a telling one. I can't believe the option taken by the two experienced players of Carlton. Williams, the player with the ball, looking for Kernan. Kernan's run to the worst part of the ground, and Williams' kick was terrible. Why he didn't try and centre it down the corridor and let the breeze take it across by a little? It's got me beat, and now there's a goal at the other end of the ground. No mark taken. Kudafidis with a quick hand pass to Gleeson. His kick was equally expeditious. Francis, good kick. Centering kick should mark this Stasovic. That's a very, very good kick. He, he looked it up the ground, saw Stasovic was free. So Stasovic for his first goal. He's got it. The Blues badly needing a goal after they got a great start in this match. He kicks up towards left half forward. Back oh. over the top. Great mark taken by Gary Kurt. That's slightly better than those of uh, Monkhurst at the moment. But a good battle. Monkhurst wins this tap. Beautifully done to McGuan. And away he goes. No one chasing. Williams hasn't got the speed to go with him. He can kick a goal. 55 metres out. Just off the hands of John Dorotich. Oh. Could be a goal. McEwen! Yes, he's done it! McEwen, another interchange player, kicks a goal. 7-11 to 5-7 at Waverley. Madden, one of the stars of the game so far. Stasovic with front posse. Gleeson, who likewise has been quiet, straight up in the air. Sexton tries to fist it away, so too does Alvin. Stasovic looks for some run, gets it from right, who's just come onto the ground. Russell, only his second kick this quarter, inside 50, goes at goal and gets it! Just what Collingwood needed, a real steadier kick by Scotty Russell. He's had 12 possessions, but most of those did come in the first quarter, 8-11 to 7-7. Madden. Almost a clean possession. Gleeson almost throws the ball out. Jamie Turner 
Off to McGuan, ball slews off the side of the boot. Turns out to be a centering kick. Dacos in front of Silvani. The two superstars have been relatively quiet. Dacos so far with only four possessions. Make that his fifth. But it's a beauty on the McGuan. McGuan 45 metres out directly in front. Scores a ripper goal. So Mick McGuan gets his second with the assist from Peter Dacos. So Madden from centre half back. Goes out wide. Defensive side of the ground again. Oh, oh Hannah missed certainly what he should have taken. Opportunity maybe for Rowe. Christo likewise missed it. Stasevich over the top to McCure. He started on the bench. A high kick. Won't be a mark. Was touched off the boot. Rowe overruns it. Christo's there with him. So too is Dacos. A little bit of a nudge in the back. Over Got the a back free the kick. Line. Yes. Certainly wasn't a, a real hefty job, but certainly a push. Dacos straight away to McCure. Should be a goal to Collingwood. End is. Magnificent vision from Peter Dacos. Neither can take the mark. Francis, who had a quiet third term. So to I guess, to Tony Shaw. Had a brilliant oh. first half. Oh, courage shown by McGuan. Rowe off the ground. The rebound goes to Francis. He gets pole Down he goes. McMullen. He's had a couple of stints on the bench. Shaw didn't get the bounce he would have wanted. That must be a free kick. Grab were not in possession. The Collingwood captain and Tony Shaw. 21 possessions so far will take the free kick at midfield. A little bit of a wrestle behind play. He goes on with it. Fraser. McEwen. Well, that was always going to carry the pack. McEwen with uh, the sit right at the back. That's not the best position the coach might ask his forward. But when you've got the breeze with you and Fraser streaming downfield, he read his teammates kick better than the Carlton backs. Finishes up with the footy. Point blank range. The angle, no problem. McEwen goal. Carlton, of course, have the tough one next week at Subiaco against the West Coast Eagles. I'd love to sew this one up today. Russell gets it back from uh, Mark Fraser. Oh, strong mark to Stasevich. Gives it over quickly to Russell, but they're going into the pocket. This will have to be a good kick from Rowe. Bernardas it and kicks a goal! Well, they ran deep into the pocket. 84 now to 83, Carlton by only a point. Dean down towards half forward, a floater, Bradley is down there, Richardson, great mark, body to body with Craig Bradley. Bradley's upset, he needs to pay attention. Perk comes away, Perk to Fraser, spare a thought to Collingwood supporters, they've been through this a few times this season, kick towards half forward, Spalding, almost raked it and he's over the ball, that could be holding the ball, it is. So well, just not... Sorry, Dennis, he made an attempt to get rid of it early and then he fell with his back to the umpire and that's why the umpire couldn't see the second attempt to get rid of it now he gets pinged. But Just so outside the 50, Craig Stasevich goes short, Monkhorst. Well, he's played second fiddle to Justin Madden most of the day. Just over nine minutes remaining in the game. Calvin lead by two points. Monkhorst, good-looking kick. Goal. Turner runs up towards centre half back. Francis got the numbers to work it out. Pert Shaw on the other side. Some of the experienced heads coming into play there. Well weighted kick. The youngster on the end of it. So Fraser down towards left half forward. Plays on now a little too easily. Is looking for McEwen in front of Reese Jones and he marks on his chest. McEwen. He spent a lot of time on the bench today, but he's kicked three goals. He'll kick from just inside the 50 here. If he gets a goal, it'll make it very difficult for the Blues. Collingwood lead by three points. This to make it nine. It's home. The players tired. Francis seems to have recovered from that, we presume, bat of the cramp he had. McCartney, good hand pass. Richardson. A steadying pass down to half forward and Stasevich has marked. McEwen's free in the goal square if he turns around. Well, he shouldn't have turned his back on the player, I guess, but Hannah has gone back to pick him up. And the player loose down there is Peter Dacos. And he's been pretty quiet today. He's only had nine possessions. One of them was a miraculous goal at this end. He gave McEwen another one at the other end. Of course, he got out of a sick bed on Thursday to take his place in the side. And of course... The plus is that he's taken Silvani out of the game, needing a good man to mark him. From right on 50. The 
pies a home. Yes, I'd seen Carlton absolutely demolish Footscray the previous uh, Saturday. Uh, so I knew it was going to be a tough game, but uh, it was out at VFL Park. We thought that probably suited us a little better than it did Carlton as a team. Um, it was a really good, hard fighting effort. Our, our back line was you know, superb. Um, Jason McCartney had done his job at centre half back. Gary Pert had the gigantic assignment of, uh, of holding on to Steve Kernahan, uh, who of course was Carlton's main multiple goal kicker. And he did a superb job really, kept Kernahan to very little and gave us a lot of attack on the way out. So he was very good. Uh, we were struggling up forward early to convert. We had Ronnie McEwen on interchange fortunately and he came on and kicked four goals in the second half. Uh, so and again, what again was another big game before 60 or 70,000 people. Uh, we really desperately needed the win and uh, to get it in the end just uh, consolidated our spot in the finals uh, rather than having to win the last game. So uh, well, it was a very pleasing result all around for us. Lee flex off the man in front of him. Monkhorst is the mark paid. Oh, I thought it came off a player close to the kicker. Not the case. Monkhorst to McGuan. Probing kick down towards the kickoff line. The Crows have got the numbers. It falls forward. McMullen snaps. Goal. Overcast conditions at Victoria Park. The Crows, their last game of the season. Collingwood. Battling for a place in the top two. Snap from Rocker is great. Good skills on his left foot. Not a very good kick, missed by Hart, it was a hard one. Richardson's handball. Moncourse sits and waits. Mickey Gafer. Jamie Turner, the 30-year-old. Has McGuan short, goes to him. McDermott. McGuan's handball's a beauty. Starsevich. Rowe provides the first lead. Starsevich looks further afield, goes to centre half forward. McMullen gets around Tasker. He's a good kick normally, goes for it. I reckon he might have kicked it. It's through. with two, Collingwood with three, and the Maggie stretch it a bit now. Good defensive work by Lee though. Bickley and Russell. A great take, Bickley. Russell's tackle excellent, holding the body. Well, it was a pity the, uh, probably the defensive thing to do, Bruce would have been to pump it off the ground. He had the confidence to go with the pickup. The pickup was clean, but uh, Russell's tackle was too good in the end. Not a good kick by, well, I say not a good kick. It's fallen straight into Rocker's hands. And this boy can kick. And this man could be the long-term answer. 50 metres out, drop punt, goes bang. Gee's kicked it a long way, and he's kicked it through for a goal. Ben Hart at the back. Tony Shaw, well done. Very well done. Turner. McCartney. To Dacos. A little one to McGuan. Another little one to the space with Russell to run onto it. Got a lovely bounce, and the snapshot's a magnificent goal. Well, that really hurts. That must stink. And he was looking for it off hands, but uh, Gaith was able to just squeeze him and take it. And he goes out to centre wing. Oh, Chrysisca, a big fly. Gaither stood in the tackle. This is Perth in the back pocket with some time and space now. Perth drives it around the outer side. Well-weighted kick. McGuan didn't break stride. He's away now, surrounded, but he kicks it down towards half forward. Storming up the ground is Hart. Unkind bounce. He left it behind. Brilliant pick up McEwen. Snaps it. Only gained about 25 metres. Here's a chance for Turner, though. 15 metres out. It's a goal. Collingwood start well for the second half with a goal to Jamie Turner. Hooks it towards the outer side, and Russell, Fraser, storming through. Well played again by Russell across to Shaw, who boots it to half forward. Unkind bounce for Turner. Here's Rowe inside the attacking 50. Crows closing on him, but he's fast. Rowe pulls it back, looking, I think, for Dacos and or this man drifting back, McCartney. McCartney, who's been a revelation in the second half of the season, mainly in defence, now on the forward line, playing at centre half forward. And what an important kick this is. 
put it through. So the margin is seven points. Adelaide leads 7-11 to 7-4. Lee looking for a free kick. McDermott gave it away to McGuan. McGuan very clever. Oh, good looking kick to Dacos. Drew hard underneath it. McEwen. Still McEwen. Round the body. Rolling off. Smart went for it. Missed it. Round the body by McCartney. Goal. His second. It's a terrific match. A thriller at Victoria Park. It's closer. The margin just five points now. Monkhorst against Wren. Wren gets it down looking for Jarman. It comes to McDermott. See, they've got some skill in the centre square, the Crows. Bickley, fumble, took his eye off the ball. Could have been a free kick to Russell, who didn't have it. Packing it out of mid-air, there was Lee. Hayes goes back, down he goes. Oh, it's the quick and the dead at the moment. Lee scrambles it out towards the boundary. Colling would have got the numbers. Well, a roar every time the Magpies touch the ball now. The crowd willing them on for a high finish. Turner's long kick slides across the face. Defiant fist from Ross. It falls to McCartney. And he's kicked the goal. Collingwood in front. Francis. Oh, good kick in the end. It looked ordinary off the boot, but the uh, direction was fine to Fraser. To Rowe, to McGuan, to McEwen. Back to McGuan, a goal. Seven, eight, eleven. Wren and Monkhorst. Gave for at the back. Oh, good handball by Russell. He was paid a free kick. It was play on Monkhorst. Oh, Ross did well. Hayes, Rowe, Ben Hart, caught, holding it, threw it in the end. Free kick to McEwen. It'll come back. Just two goals have been kicked to the left of screen all day. Is this number three? It is, I think. Big Ronnie's done it. Collingwood have pinched a break into the breeze, 11 8 to 8 11. It's a dead set even money bet at this stage. Shaw manhandling Jarman. Now Rowe running onto it. This is Turner. Out wide for Russell. He can take it and go. Russell from outside the 50 goes in short for McEwen. Great pass. Yes, it was. It was the obvious play. McEwen and Dacos, both players, as soon as I saw Rowe had the ball. They were able to gain that couple of metres advantage. Just got away from the defenders there. Jonathan Ross and a terrific pass from Scotty Russell. Very important kick, this one. Another goal against the breeze for Ron McEwen. He's kicked a half forward. Or oh, Maynard, I think, was expecting Micken to go. And he's been paid the compliment, Maynard, of having Gay for tagging you. Here's Richardson. With a fair bit of time. Francis, it wasn't a good kick. Tregenza. Sure. Still sure. Not enough pressure in the end. Lee and Rowe. Rowe did very well. To McGuan. McEwen. Francis running on. Should give it to him now. Does. Can he kick a Rovers goal? He should from here. Oh, back to Ronnie. The wrong option. Now he'll kick the Rovers goal. Round the body. There it goes. It's home. Francis with his first, doesn't kick a lot, that's only his seventh goal this season, and maybe it's a winning break. Well, smart on the wing, last hurrah now for the Crows, he pumps it back in again at the fall of the ball, a big pack as you can see, it comes behind, lip tack, five points the difference, 30 seconds to play, Hodges has the ball, Micken standing start, it goes straight up in the air, it's out of bounds on the full, is it, no off hands, it'll be thrown in, and the clock continues to run. So we're down to 20 seconds now. Collingwood playing for everything. And the Crows looking as if they are. Micken and Monkhorst. 10 seconds. Can he do it again? No, Micken doesn't get to the ball this time. That one out of midair would have done nicely there. Richardson runs it across. I think it's all over. Collingwood will win another close one. Remarkable.
Well, we certainly went into the game. I mean, the Crows almost had been the most improved side in the competition over the last four or five weeks. Again, I'd had the opportunity to journey to Adelaide the previous week to watch the Crows beat topside Geelong by 100 points or something. I mean, they just were a really hot team at the time. Um, and struggle was the word. You know, we struggled our way clear. Fortunately, uh, uh, seeing Adelaide the week before, I think we knew most of the things that they would try to do tactically, so I think we were prepared for most of those. But uh, we, we got in front early, uh, but then uh, late in the second quarter, they had a purple patch and got three goals in front at half time. And it was really going to take a big performance by the players to lift themselves out of it. Um, Jason McCartney went to centre-half forward. He'd been struggling a little at centre-half back on Mark Micken. And Craig Starsevich, who'd been struggling a little up forward, he went to centre-half back. They swapped positions and both those worked out quite well. Uh, Jason kicked three goals in the second half and had a very good third quarter. Picked up the, uh, the three-goal deficit and got ourselves uh, you know, that, that couple of goals in front uh, early in the last quarter. Extended that, I think, to three goals uh, uh, midway through the last quarter, but going against the Brews, it was absolute hang on for life or death, really, in the last uh, five or ten minutes. And the Crows had a couple of shots for goal that they, uh, that they missed, and uh, we ended up winning by the, uh, the bare margin, I think five points it was in the end. And uh, we thought it w we, we really were struggling a little bit. We weren't playing well, we were struggling hard, but we really weren't playing well, just purely playing good football. We really weren't able to get it together. So we were in the finals, but we knew that we had to find something uh, over the following month. Um, but the Crows at the same time were probably as good of a good a team at that point of the year as the majority of the teams in the competition, which probably uh, augurs well for them in the future and sells, uh, gives everybody in Victoria, I think, the danger signs that the Crows uh, are going to be a very good side in the future. I mean, we were playing uh, St Kilda, of course, who, who the previous weekend had the bye and didn't really know whether they were going to be in the finals or not. We didn't know whether that would be at a disadvantage or an advantage. Nevertheless, there was nothing we could do about it, so that didn't take a lot of our thought. But we picked our side uh, for Waverley, uh, for St Kilda, and expecting fairly soft, if maybe even wet conditions were forecast. It turned out to be a soft ground but a dry ball. Um, and a fairly still day, which I think in retrospect helped their marking forwards. I mean, we knew that we had to, uh, we had to stop uh, low at centre-half forward and lock it in full for at full forward. We couldn't let them dominate the game. Uh, Robert Harvey was the other player who was their main midfielder who we had to try and give some, uh, some thought to. Um, our strategies going into the game were we brought Michael Christian back in to play centre-half back. He had played the last five or six weeks, seniors and reserves, after being injured early in the year. We thought he was the, the best player to start on Stuart Lowy. Uh, Jason McCartney, who had been playing there, we thought had struggled a little the week before on Mark Mick in the six foot four, the big, tall centre half forward. And we thought, therefore, you know, an 18 year old first game player, we just thought that Michael's experience and extra height might be better against Stuart Lowy. So we made that change, but uh, kept Jason in the side. But consequently, we left Severio Rocker out on the basis that we could only pick 20 players and we had to decide the balance. Big ground at Waverley. We put our hopes in Ronnie McEwen to play at uh, full forward and therefore Severio lost his place for that game. The Harvey situation, we knew that the St Kilda would feel that Mick McGrath was our main on-ball uh, running player and he would be given most of their defensive attention. So we decided... We, we thought we didn't have a player to, uh, to play on, uh, on, on Harvey. We may have played Graham right on him, but we were a little uncertain about his match condition after injury. So we decided to start with uh, Mick on uh, Harvey, knowing that he would probably have a tagging player uh, chasing him round, and that might give us the initial advantage, which probably in retrospect it, it did a little. We'll go into that a little later. Um, but, uh, but all in all, it was a very difficult selection week. We probably had 14 or 15 players that uh, more or less demanded their position and we had another maybe dozen players in contention for the following five positions. Uh, Gavin Brown we knew wasn't 100% fit but he felt he was in a good enough condition to be able to play a useful role so we picked him. 
Um, but Gavin Krasisko had only played the week before after a hamstring injury. He wasn't injured, but how was his match condition? There was too many ifs and buts and maybes for, uh, for all our liking uh, in terms of which 20 to put on the field. Shane Morwood had, had missed the previous three games with the back injury, so we decided we couldn't really risk him, even though he was available to play. Um, so all in all, it was a very difficult selection week, and uh, we went into the game knowing that we would have to improve on what our performances had been over the previous couple of weeks, but the feeling that VFL Park probably was a better ground for us to be playing against St Kilda. Uh, I don't think VFL Park is the best ground for the big marking forwards. So we went into it optimistic with a, a very different result from winning or losing. If we won, we went into the second semi-final and the double chance. If we lost, of course, we were out of it completely. So there was a gigantic difference between winning and losing in this game. Vitovic with the left hand, gets it down to Ralph Smith. Dacox, close to the boundary line, shuffles it back to Francis, caught with the ball, gets in a hand pass to Russell. And St Kilda try and get it away for Robert. Oh, that's a free yeah, kick played to Collingwood. And a 50 metre penalty, which will be taken in the goal square. Yes, that was against Harvey, the St Kilda, who kicked it away. He thought St Kilda had the advantage. And it is one of the problems with this rule. As we see on replay here, Francis taken too high. Gets the handball out to Russell. And there's the Harvey kick that draws the 50 metre penalty. 50 metre penalty, far too harsh. Players, well, if that had been St Kilda getting the kick, it would have been advantage. A goal to Francis. Ooh, what a scoreline. Five and a half minutes to quarter time. 1 4 to 1 3. Concourse hand pass intercepted by Harvey. Morris grabbed by Gaper. No whistle this time. Low. Had 10 possessions at centre half forward, Stewie Low. Kick it. Morris covered ground to get there. Terrific play by Woods. His hand passes great for Wright. They've got speed across the centre, Collingwood. Wright short passes to Moncourt, who's covered about 80 metres. Off to Russell. This should be a goal. That was Tony Shaw having the ball smothered. It ends up with Richardson. Richardson to half forward, Gavin Brown. Brown way out at half forward, a long way to the goals. Ronnie McEwen leading now. McEwen versus Frawley. Frawley, uh, McEwen. Oh, oh. stage for the free kick up field. But he might have just got into his back, what do you think, Jerry? No, I thought it stays. My immediate thought was a uh, bit of an act there, Peter. Let's we'll see on the replay. There's no doubt he's got his hand there. Oh, hand on the neck and then... Oh, but there was hardly the shove to uh, push a 16-stone man to the ground, Pete. What do you think? Well, Ronnie McEwen's got the kick, nevertheless, from 35 metres almost directly in front. As he kicks, he's a beautiful kick. He's put it through for a goal. Yes, well, there's no prizes for second today. For the loser, it's mothballs. For the winner, they get a chance to go Frank, on and take the premiership. Craig Devonport from the centre of the ground. Morris knocked it on, but Moncourt's playing very, very well. Gets it to Shaw. Tony Shaw, here's a big chance for the Magpies because Craig starts it his mark. 40 metres from goal directly in front. Pretty lucky kick there. Starsevic just in the right place at the right time. Starsevic from directly in front. This is close. And Craig Starsevic is gone. Twenty-seven playing sixteen. Biggest break so far to Collingwood. Harvey toes it off the ground. Vitovic gets the old free kick. It's coming back to Collingwood to Gavin Brown. Just as the Saints were off and running. Kick by Brown to centre half forward. Starsevich again. Second mark in a minute. Dishes out the hand pass. McQuan, 45 metres from goal. Speed by Fraser. Breaks the tackle. Over the top to Brad Rowe. And Rowe. Two goals in a minute to Collingwood. Goes in to get it again. Good play by the big man. Well played, Mickey Gaper to smother. Now it's Monkhorst. Oh, wild hair pass, but it comes off. Tony Shaw, a chip pass. Collingwood off and running. Francis from centre wing. They must make something of this forward charge. Gavin Brown. 
Now the pacing Mark Fraser, the chip passes on Ronnie McEwen. Good lead, good mark, left kick. McEwen is a beautiful kick of a football. He is directly in front, will kick from 40 metres. There it is. Bang, right through the middle for a badly needed Collingwood goal. Ronnie McEwen has kicked his second and the Magpies fight back. 8-7 St Kilda, 6-4 the Magpies. Francis, a high ball. It goes past Rowe and Burke. That was a free kick. Fraser. McEwen underneath it. Brown at the back, a goal! And the Pies are storming back at the Saints. The margin, seven points. Jason McCartney, distance a doubt here. He's about 55 metres. He's going to go the long kick, though. If he gets onto it, it'll land up in the goal square. Here's a chance for the high markers. Knocked down by Shanahan. He's got Nathan Burke there in Newport. Oh, New Newport went back into trouble. Suck it up the ground, and it's a goal off him. Yes. Fred Rowe has kicked the goal. And the Magpies come back yet again. Seven points the margin. Dacos rips it out of the centre, 88 to 59. Tough for Collingwood. Oh, good mark for Kewen. The Dacos coming, having a run in the centre of the ground. His ability to move the ball out of the centre could well have been used earlier in the piece. However, he has been shifted now, but I think time will beat Collingwood. And this is a good mark from Ron McEwen, but the two sides that will be wrapped in this result will be the West Coast Eagles and Hawthorne. The winner of which now will go straight into the second semi-final. Kicked by McEwen. A mighty effort. But, yes, has he got it? He has. Stasevich out to centre wing. Krasiska takes the mark or the free kick. It'll be the free kick to Gavin Krasiska. The margin is 23 points. We have 12 and a half minutes left. Collingwood have done it before. Brown, no. Daniels. Ripped away from the pack by Fraser. Burke is there. His kick back to centre wing. It's punched on. McGuan at the back. Still giving the Pies a chance. McGuan short of half forward. Burke punches. What a pick up by Francis off his bootlaces. Right. Good running by Russell. Kick by Russell for McEwen. Poor kick. Didn't reach him on the full. Ronnie's got it. Tries to tunnel his way through and does to McCartney. His hand pass is not bad. Russell dodges from 50, goes long, and kicks a goal! Well, you can't stress enough that the Collingwood players have all been in these tight ones before. It must give you some experience in how to handle it. Brown, a great mark. They need a lift from Tony Francis. He's had 20 possessions, but hasn't been that dominant, considering he had about eight of those in the first quarter. He has gone missing. McCartney goes to ground. Grant just gets the hand pass out. Woods is here for Collingwood. Back near centre wing. He goes in. That's the way to play it. To Russell, who kicked the last lifting goal. His pass to McEwen. Fantastic. Well, he's taken three strong marks on the lead in the last quarter, McEwen. Well, he's a great kick of a football, Drew. He's the man you want to have the kick. Three goals the difference. A great piece of play by the experienced Morris. Monkhorst, it's Shark by Pekin. Back to Bowie. Short of low. Oh, cleans up his own man. Stasevich. Breaks away Craig Stasevich. The kick is good to Tony Shaw. Pretty quiet game from the skipper. Brown leads. Gavin Brown, two kicks to goal from there. McEwen's your man. McEwen. He's got oh, no. Well, McEwen, Brown and Scott Russell have just lifted unbelievably in this last 15 minutes. Three fantastic individual performances and they'll be responsible for the victory if Collingwood can get up. Well, Shanahan did everything right. McEwen, superb run.
eight seconds remaining. The Ruckman have given superb displays, and right over the top, Morris. Well, the, the game, I think, started fairly evenly for both for both teams. Um, the one player that got away from us very much early on was Stuart Lowy at centre half forward. He uh, he just uh, had nine, I think, possessions in the first quarter. He was troubling us. Our situation with with Mick McGrath and Robert Harvey, I think, was working our way because as Stephen Newport from St Kilda went out to to tag Mick McGrath, Mick was playing fairly close on Harvey, so Tony Francis ended up being the fourth player in that little group, and uh, I think that was one of the reasons, frankly, why we gradually got clear, and uh, early in the second quarter, we kicked a couple of goals and got 16 points in front, and were flowing along fairly well. I think it was in the next 10 minutes of the game where we completely lost it. Uh, Robert Harvey, by this stage, St Kilda had readjusted their lineup. He started to really get a lot of the ball around midfield. Um, Mickey, who'd had McGuane, who'd had a really a fantastic year for us, uh, look, really started to look very tired very early in the game. And uh, they got uh, the goals late in the second quarter that put them that couple of goals clear at half time. And uh, the match was always going to be a bit of a struggle, of course, from then on. We went into the, the third quarter and it ended up being fairly even. I mean, we got to within a goal, St Kilda got away again and got a couple of goals clear, and that was the way we went in at, 13, uh, at three quarter time, I think 13 points behind. And then when St Kilda kicked the first uh, three goals of the last quarter to go almost five goals clear, well, you know, the season uh, and the game was looking really in fairly desperate straits. But as has happened very often before, the guys refused to give it away uh, and kept at it. Uh, Ronnie McEwen had an exceptional last quarter, kicked three goals and uh, we got to within the seven points of, uh, of St Kilda but uh, we just couldn't quite get that little bit closer. Had a couple of shots that might have been you. Look at the replay, a couple of free kicks that might have gone our way. I mean we got into a situation where the game was winnable up until about the 20 minute mark of the last quarter. Then the rain came. I don't think that helped us. I mean, we were coming home fairly strong at that stage. The ball got wet and slippery. It stopped our momentum in its tracks, and really St Kilda held us fairly comfortable, uh, comfortably over the last five minutes of the game. So really, uh, we went there knowing that the season may, it may have held that in store for us at the end of our season, could have ended that day. But uh, when it actually happened, well, it's a fairly depressing, soul-searching uh, Part of, the, part of the year. It ends so abruptly when you get to these cutthroat games. I couldn't summons up a great deal of anger, to be honest. I, I just thought they had worked so hard throughout the year to achieve what their position going into that last week that, and I, and I felt they'd battled fairly hard against St Kilda. I mean, I've never been able to question this year the, the work ethic and the team spirit of the group. I mean, we might have been up and down in performance, individually but I thought certainly as a group um, I thought they just worked so hard to prepare themselves for games and within games that I you know at that stage of, of, of the day everyone's down enough I don't think uh, they're disappointed enough without me having I think to to kind of jump on their backs uh, so uh, it's it's again as we always must do we have to learn our lessons from what happened this year over the season as a team and individually um, to, to get to that stage where we get a week or two after the season the disappointment is still there but it is there, it's gone, it's in history. Now we must plan ahead positively, uh, work out what we're going to do pre-Christmas, what we're going to do pre-season and for each individual to be a better player uh, when we get to March next year. Well, the word that sticks in my mind when I summarise our season is consistent. I thought we played to a consistent level for the majority of the 22 games. It wasn't as consistently high enough as, as what we aim for, but it never got to any great depths either. I think over the whole season, the worst game we had in terms of the scoreboard was the Carlton game when they beat us by 33 points in the centenary game. 
And as I mentioned earlier, even in that game, we kicked 9-18. So if we kicked accurately, we may well have been right in that game. So every game we played, we were in with a winning chance during the last quarter. But I, I never felt we had many games where we really excelled and, and really destroyed the opposition on any given day. So we were consistent, not consistently high, but we never, the players never allowed it to get to a depth of despair level either. So it was a consistent year, uh, I think a great work ethic amongst the group to prepare and within games. Um, but overall, we, we know our scoring power is something that we have to just keep uh, increasing all the time so that uh, if the other side kicks 18 goals that we can still kick 20 and beat them almost most of our games had to be fairly uh, low scoring games because in real pressure games uh, 12 13 goals seemed about at our, about at the highest level and that is uh, not enough um, to to reach the levels that we want well well this year we in terms of the newcomers to the club. We played nine players this year who had never played for Collingwood before. Uh, one of course was Gary Pert who was already established you know, good quality player and we were very pleased to get him. Um, and we think he'd be better again next year because your first year back after a knee operation is, is usually not your best. But he was good. Uh, Severio Rocker, Shane Watson, uh, young players who hadn't uh, played senior football before. Mark Fraser is in that group. Jason McCartney is another one. Those players were introduced to senior football and uh, I thought acquitted themselves well enough to hope that they have successful careers ahead of them should they do the right things you know, in the future. Uh, Tony Woods, who was recruited from Fitzroy, I think proved to be a fairly capable player for us. Got a bad hamstring injury uh, during the year that reoccurred two or three times, so that decimated his season really uh, overall. Uh, Brad Hardy, of course, who came in from the Bears, played a couple of games. I'm searching for the uh, for the next couple of names so that I don't leave uh, anybody out. But uh, they were the ones who who kind of hit me hit, hit my um, my mind as players who weren't at the club before. Now, in that group overall, uh, the majority are young players, early 20s or teenagers, who I hope can be uh, and trust and confident, to be honest, will be good players for us in the future. You go to the other end of the extreme, the players who are getting late 20s, wrong side of 30s. Well, Tony Shaw's in that category now, uh, Peter Dacos is in that category, Shane Ward's in that category, Jamie Turner's in that category. All those players uh, logically have to, um, there's no logical reason why they can't be as good next year, but we all know that every year you uh, have to work that much harder to stay at the same level you were the year before. So, so those players we're still hoping will be part of Collingwood next year in their terms of senior, productive, value for us but uh, those kind of things is really up to the individual players and what they do to themselves and I suppose what the wear and tear of age does to them uh, so a lot of those things you can't control so I'm quite optimistic that we have got a group together that can be better next year with this year as experience under their belt I don't believe we uh, we of course lost Darren Mullane last year tragically uh, we lost Craig Kelly for injury wise uh, the middle of the year. Now both those two players were two of our most powerful characters, personalities on the field within the group. Dragging those two guys uh, out of the group was always going to be something that you couldn't replace easily. It takes time, you know, unfortunately as, as players will come and go, obviously not in the tragic circumstances that, uh, that, that, that Darren's was, uh, one would hope. Um, but that's certainly, in short term, that's going to have very negative effects, and that has. Um, so I think the side has to more or less recover from those things gradually. Uh, but nevertheless, I think the young players that, that did come in, uh, I think there is some optimism, real, some real cause for optimism, particularly when one of them is one of our, our big marking sort of key forward types that we've been searching for. Um, so all in all, I'm optimistic about the future and of players that are either in the of the extreme, that probably mentions most, most of them, I think, uh, the majority of other players are in their 20s and uh, therefore there's no reason why they can't be uh, at least as good again, if not better. Well, I think the area of the, of the, the side that probably was, was the rotating door this year, really, was probably centre-half forward. 
Um, Shane Warwood played well there in some games. Craig Starsevich played reasonably there in some games. Jimmy Manson played reasonably there in some games. But we never had one player who tended to, to say, well, listen, I play well enough to play centre-half forward week in, week out. That was a problem area for us. And full forward, I think we've got some promise in that area. Ronnie McEwen has done OK there at times. Um, we often thought early in the year, he, if he kicked a bit more accurately, he may have tied that in that position for himself. Um, Shane Watson did quite well for us there early in the season. Severio Rocker has done quite well there at other stages of the season. And of course Peter Dacos has done well as that full forward line player with a full forward. And I think probably he's more like a full forward now than anything, uh, Peter. So well, together, um, at different stages of the year, all of those players did fairly well. Uh, but not one of them, I suppose, looked like kicking eight, nine or ten goals on a good day. And, that's the level of a full forward one is looking for, you know, eventually. So, and, and you, then you look at the, uh, the smaller goal kickers. I think we missed Doug Barwick this year, to be honest, who was a player who could play half forward flank, particularly if the side was doing well, he could kick his two or three goals to build up your score. Um, Paul Williams, I think, had a second year blues in a way. I didn't, didn't think he got injured or hurt his knee earlier in the year. But I think Paul is a goal kicking winger half forward who I think will be better now that he's had this the second year out of the road, one would hope. But that the smaller goal kicking forwards, all the one that is the key forwards um, of a high quality. I mean, we're talking your your your, your champion centre forward, full forwards. That let's face it, that's what everyone's looking for. But also the the goal, the smaller goal kickers that can complement those type of players. I think that's the main areas where we see us improving. But I also am confident there that. We've got a couple of 18, 19 year olds and you add Mark Richardson into that group. We've got some young players who are that type of player and if they weren't in league football, probably they would be very hot property. So at least we've got some youngsters that play the positions where we believe that the, uh, the, the most improvement needs to be generated. Oh, our goal undoubtedly is to win a premiership. Uh, we know we've got to make the finals to do that. And I think one of the most galling things at the moment is that if we could guarantee ourselves winning 16 games next year, we'd feel quite comfortable with that. And the fact that we've won it this year and disappeared the first week of the finals, I think is one of these things that is going to play on our minds a lot. Not you know, for the moment, not for next year, of course. So we go into next year, I think, optimistic that we're in the top bracket of clubs. As I said uh, throughout of a lot of my comments, I just believe we need to get more out of the 20 players within our team in the one weeks. Uh, we, as we didn't believe we got that this year. We need to get some improvement out of many players, particularly the, the younger type players who are the ones that logically, with, a, with that two or three years of league experience, uh, are capable of improving the most. And if we do that, well then I think we are can be logically and optimistically confident uh, that we can be right up there in the top bracket again.